even more focused on your needs. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. Reuters reports South Carolina Senate passed legislation Tuesday to remove the Confederate battle flag from the state's capital grounds where it has flown for five decades. A bill to banish the flag from the state house grounds to a museum easily passed a third and final 36 to 3 vote in the Senate. The bill is now headed to the state house of representatives which voted to bring it to the floor for debate on Wednesday. The legislation was deemed an impossibility only months ago but it gained strong bipartisan support since nine churches churchgoers were gunned down on June 17th during Bible study at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, about two hours southeast of the state capitol. Photos of Dylan Roof, the man charged in the shooting, showed him posing with a Confederate flag on a website bearing a racist manifesto. A grand jury indicted Roof on nine counts of murder and three counts of attempted murder, according to a prosecutor. The flag's defenders argue that it's part of South Carolina's heritage, representing those who fought and died for the rebellious southern states that formed the Confederate States of America in the 1861-1865 Civil War. Republican Senator Lee Bright argued on Tuesday that the flag has been unfairly tied to slavery. He asserted not one Confederate flag flew over a slave ship. He noted that many leaders of the 18th century fight for American independence from Britain were slave owners themselves. While most politicians recognize that the banner is part of the state's heritage, many agree it should no longer be flown in a public place. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The NFL announces a new zero-tolerance policy on videotape domestic violence. A puzzled nation can remember the name Ferguson, but is not sure from where. And a man wearing an M&M jacket is apparently made in God's image. This is The Onion Week in Review. Tech giant Apple unveiled a brief, fleeting moment of excitement to the general public. The short-lived, ephemeral sense of wonder was released in front of an exclusive group of reporters and industry insiders at Apple's Silicon Valley headquarters. Apple really made us wait but this rapidly diminishing glimmer of pleasure was totally worth it. It was 100% better than any other temporary joys I've ever experienced. And in this week's local news, an uneasy detente forms between a man sitting on a patio and a bee. In other news, a poll finds 80% of Americans would get in a vehicle with a stranger for a chance at a new life. Bank of America introduces a new $50 underdraft fee, and the nation's huggers announce plans for you to get over here. This is the Onion News Network. Welcome to Free Talk Live. Join us here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The us includes tonight me, Ian. Oh, sorry. Let me try that again, Taryn. Oh, go. finally going to let bad. me on air. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> and I'm Taryn Lupo. Hey, welcome. Uh, you can join us here. You can call in toll free at 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype. You may Skype into the show. Skype username is lrn.fm. So was it just a glitch uh, today on Wall Street as the New York Stock Exchange was reporting earlier? Just a technical difficulty on the inside? Or was Anonymous involved in the takedown uh, of the Stock Exchange, or I guess the New York Stock Exchange today? We'll find out more about that coming up here in a moment. But actually, I believe we've got Crom on the line here from uh, Liberland. Crom, are you with us? Yes, but I'm not on Liberland. <laughs> You're not in Liberland. Um, oh, that's because you'll get uh, kidnapped, kidnapped if you go there, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got there on the weekend. I think I got, those guys saw the video, and uh, I'm now a hostage on Croatia, which is quite interesting because I tried to come in here a few weeks ago. They rejected me twice, which means... They don't want niggers in their country, but now I I'm sorry, I had to. Uh, I, I don't know what you I said there, but I, I had to drop that <laughs> word. Uh, it might mean uh, something might different something in Croatia. Croatia. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, and I am hearing myself back, so it can be a little bit uh, distracting. It's not terrible, but but it is happening. No problem. Uh, uh, so you were you were arrested. You were kidnapped by the Croatians. In fact, I'm going to turn you down while I talk because it is a little bit distracting. You were uh, kidnapped by the Croatians, and uh, you were trying to get into Liberland, the three-square-mile plot of land in between Croatia and Serbia. You were one of four people most recently uh, violently 
uh, kidnapped by these Croatian guards. And you corrected me when we spoke earlier. I had said you were arrested, and you reminded me you were kidnapped. And that's, <laughs> that's absolutely true. Are you calling us from Croatia right now, Krom? Yes, I'm calling. Oh, and of course, as soon as I ask the question is when <laughs> he drops out. <laughs> Disconnection. Uh, are you? No. Yep. We are having internet I'm from problems. Croatia. I'm a hostage right now in Croatia. Oh, I, okay. as soon as I ask the question, oh okay. I'm hearing you now, Krom. So you're a hostage now. Okay, maybe I am having problems. Are uh, you in? Uh, you're not calling us from jail on Skype, are you? Yeah. No, no. Um, okay. Fortunately, there is um, some rights which I have, and they are willing to respect, such as having the court hearing on my native language. Okay. And I use that so I can have an extra time here to prepare myself for jail time and also to give them a little bit more work. You know, uh, I'm not going to be easy. I wasn't easy to be captured. I'm not going to be easy to go to jail. I want to make sure I, I make them respect every right I have. And you're from yeah. Brazil, is that correct? I was born in Brazil. I'm from Earth. The idea of borders is a bullshit sure. idea for civilized men. But yes, the part of Earth in which I was born, you guys call it Brazil. Yep, I get where you're coming from there, Krom, and I uh, I can definitely appreciate that. So you're not calling us from jail though right now? Did you get bailed out? What What's your current uh, status? Uh, no, the thing is uh, they cannot hold me uh, before for more than 24 hours without okay. a court hearing. So I demand that the court hearing would be done on my native language, right? which is Portuguese. And in that case, they have now to find a translator. And since they don't have the translator, they release me, but they pretty much hold my documents and I cannot leave Croatia. I have oh, wow. To okay. So you're basically you're out on bail conditions. They've got your paperwork. Uh, when's the next court date for you? Uh, on the 14th, but I have to go to the police station every two days to report in. Wow. As proof that I'm not <laughs> leaving Croatia. Now, what about <laughs> the other three that were arrested with you most recently? Okay. So there's me and there is the... Another guy uh, from the Red Cross, um, right. Yoshi, he's also here with me. So the two of us have to go to the police station every two days. We actually were there this morning. Uh, and also one thing that is very important for you guys to know is that they are pretty much um, bullying us all the time. I mean, they call the hotels in which I check in and let the hotel know that I'm a criminal, even though I have wow. to check in with work from the police. And then the, 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 the reason, the thing what happened is the owner of the hotels do not want to have the police come in there to verify if I'm there and having to explain that to the other guests. So the owner of the hotel politely asked me to leave. Um, and then that way I'm back leaving in the van. I actually live in a van and I want to check in the hotel because it's the law in Croatia that once you, check, you are a tourist in, you have to report to a hotel in less than 24 hours. So if you're yeah, hold on, let me make sure I just heard what you said correctly. If you're in Croatia, they want you to check into a hotel within 24 hours as a tourist. Yes. So the police can know where you are. And if you go to a friend's house, your friend has to take his uh, pa uh, paper that proves that he's the owner of the property where you're staying. And then you have to check in. That's the law. But actually, they don't enforce that law. It's, it's from the communist time of uh, Yugoslavia. Yeah, but, but they might enforce it, it on you. Yeah, <laughs> they they enforcing anything they can on me. Right. They, I mean, they are they actually sent Falini, my girlfriend, back to Serbia, and she's a EU citizen because of a bag of potatoes that we bought in Croatia. Incredible. Uh, so <laughs> so you're gonna be basically hanging out there until the 14th. When is this the full trial that's gonna be held on the 14th? Yeah, What's happening the full there? Trial, and they are they are really in trouble because. I'm not going to pay any fine or let anyone pay any fine on my behalf. Mm -hmm. I was not violating any law. What have you been charged with? Here's the thing. There is no charge. They what? charged me with uh, illegal border crossing, okay, into the Schengen area. And they actually put that on paper, Schengen area. Croatia is not Schengen area yet. And I don't see Schengen area accepting a country who doesn't know its borders. So let me understand this. For, for people that are new to this story, you're – basically getting charged by a country that doesn't really have any jurisprudence telling you where yeah, to be. They, you crossed into Liberland, this yes. new, new country from Serbia, and yes. the Croatian goons kidnapped you. Yes, and the thing is, I they took an hour before they could get enough police force on the island to kidnap me. 
And while they were there, I kneel. There's, there's a footage of me kneeling in front of the policeman and say, produce me one piece of evidence that you are standing on a soil that you have jurisdiction. Oh, man. He can't do Give it. Give me a map. Give me something. They, that proves to me that you have jurisdiction over this soil. Yeah, they crossed their border, their imaginary line. They crossed it to go arrest you. Yes. But is oh. there any like, sort of repercussions? I mean— No charge. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying it's is not, they can hold them with no charge so there's no dirty legal deal they have to deal with borders. I mean, I'm not familiar with the Croatian government. Yeah, I'm not familiar with their court system, but, you know, over uh, in the United States, usually there's some sort of semblance of a charge, some sort of uh, random string of words they've thrown on a piece of paper. <laughs> in this case, you're saying you've been charged with nothing, but yet there's a court date? Yeah, there's a court hearing saying that I illegally enter Schengen area. And that's an and, area of Croatia is what they're saying? Okay, because in, in here in Europe they have EU and they have what they call Schengen. So Schengen, only some countries belong to Schengen area. So, for instance, if you come to Europe and you stay within Schengen countries, you can only stay for 90 days. How do you spell that? Uh, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> yeah, because I've so, never heard the word before. No, I've never heard. So you're saying yeah. uh, th there's a couple countries that get together and they call them, they're, they're classified as Schengen countries and the rules yeah. are different. And the rules are you stay in for 90 days. Now, the thing is, um, let me see if I can spell that correct. How do you spell that? S-C-H. S-C-H. Okay, that's what I forget. S-C-H. E-N. E-N-G. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I have here Schengen visa. So, uh, if you guys know uh, the phonetic uh, alphabet, I'll say to Sierra. Yeah, yeah, no, I, fo yeah. I followed what uh, what you were yeah. saying there. Um, so, I, I guess, so what you're saying is the Croatian government guys are saying that you were in Schengen and yes. that that's some sort of other thing besides the EU or it's part of the EU? I, this is but news to me. It's within EU. It's within EU. Uh -huh. But not all EU countries. So they're claiming they have some sort of international jurisdiction over that land? Is that yes, the idea? They, are, they, they, are, they say verbally. And I asked him, I asked the officer, if you, I, these are my words to him. I say, if you give me one evidence that I am standing in Croatia right now, I will burn the flag, I'll leave, and you're never going to see me again. Instead, they uh, kidnapped you and... Put you in a cage. Yes. Krom, will you do me a favor? Uh, you know, if you're not put in a cage for a period of time uh, after your trials, call us back and let us know how it goes, or or have somebody I'll else place call. In a cage. I, I have to tell you because I'm not going to pay any fine or allow anyone to yeah, pay any that's fine. that's a good point. So I hope somebody so calls and gives us an update. Krom, thank you for your call tonight. I appreciate it. We'll come back with more free talk live here in moments. Eight fifty five four fifty free is the toll free number. For P150, P150GA, P150OK, P150T, NC250, AC250, EC250Q. Not available in all states. Um, Have you put off seeing the dentist because you can't afford to go? Are big dental bills taking a big toll on your wallet? Would you like to have dental insurance, but think it's too expensive? <laughs> uh, How did if you, you answered guy, yes uh, to any of these in. questions, like he call Physicians Mutual Insurance Company for Someone a free information kit. <laughs> See how you can cool help protect actually... your teeth and your wallet you. by calling now. Hey, uh, 1 uh, 5920 Okay, he's gone. This is real dental insurance that can help cover over 300 procedures. Everything from cleanings and fillings to crowns and dentures. Your acceptance is guaranteed for one of these insurance policies, even if you're retired. You can see any dentist you choose, and you'll never pay a deductible. Call in the next 10 minutes, and we'll rush you a free information kit with all the details. 1-800-496-5920. That's 1-800-496-5920. 1-800-496-5920. If you're worried about your health and you're tired of the nasty side effects of harsh drugs or antibiotics, then look no further. Supernatural Silver is the answer. Supernatural Silver is a powerful immune system enhancer that can be used every day to help keep you healthy and well with none of those nasty side effects. It's extremely safe for use internally as well as topically. And Supernatural Silver is hundreds of times more effective than colloidal or ionic silver. It is perfect for use in the sinuses, eyes, ears, and on any wound or skin issue. Supernatural Silver is also extremely effective when taken orally and can help fight off bacteria, viruses, and mold that may be overwhelming your immune system. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com SupernaturalSilver.com and use the promo code SILVER2015 for 30% off of your entire order and give yourself and your loved ones a fighting chance. 
shaped with supernatural silver. Email is easy, instant, and free, and that can be real embarrassing. Email lacks the eye contact and body language you get in face-to-face -face conversation, or the tone of voice and other nuance you hear in a telephone conversation. Email is just words, often few words. We're all smothering in spam, so we often reply in terse fashion that's easy to misunderstand. And email doesn't cost you a postage stamp, and it lacks the deliberation time it'd take to walk to the snail mailbox, so it's easy to succumb to the oh yeah stimulus response trap. When in doubt, don't snap back at snippy messages you get. You may have mistaken the sender's intent. And unless you're sending AOL to AOL, there's no unsend. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll free. 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855-450-3733. Plus, you want to get some Bitcoin... Price has been going up over the last few weeks in general, and that's due to the uh, situation in Greece. I've actually got an article about that. Plus, by the way, the Greek banks, they're closed for another week. I don't know if you heard <laughs> oh, about man, that. Oh, man, I did. <laughs> yeah, they have, they have not reopened. Bitcoin as, is uh, 269 a day. It is. So it's uh, it was been as high as 278 in recent days, but I think it's uh, you know it could go up again. And if you want to go get some, I, I would recommend ExpressCoin. You go to ExpressCoin.com, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada. Uh, it's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive to get Bitcoin, as well as Litecoin and Dogecoin. They're a licensed money services business, and you can get your cryptocurrency with money order or check. So go to ExpressCoin.com. They've got an app you can download, or you can just use their website, ExpressCoin.com. And don't forget to use coupon code FTL. You'll save on up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency. You'll pay no transfer fee when you use coupon code FTL, like Free Talk Live, at ExpressCoin.com. So our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype, which is how Crom called us a few moments ago. You can sound great like he did i mean he was calling from very far away uh you can con connect to us on skype at username lrn.fm so how familiar are you with the liberland situation taren lupo mainly um you know i remember hearing about it when it started and i thought it was kind of like a joke and then it became a real thing and then you guys covered it and i can't believe that one of the main guys calls into the show and gives you updates so i I mean, I could I could explain to somebody the. Well, basics. that's the first time we've heard from Crom, by the way. Oh, is that the first? Yeah, okay. I, I, we've that never heard from Crom that... before. It was a great call. I mean, really <laughs> interesting. Um, poor yeah, guy. I love the idea because you know I've been listening to the show ten years, and the uh, she's every month secession comes up, or the idea of what would happen if a new country started, and probably multiple shows this year we've done that. So I kind of dig the idea of secession. Um, me and you are, are on similar pages. I just this I like to see it tried, and this yeah. is kind of an idea that's the closest thing it's I've a seen to a little different from secession, it, though, it, right? Yeah, this because is... no one had to declare. It's just empty land that they tried right. to move into because yeah. they're that, claiming that's, new land. Basically, that, that's the hardest part. I remember listening to a speech on the seasteading project, and they were just saying, you know, there's no more frontiers left. 
There's no easy place that you could just set up and live free. Everything is claimed by some sort of government entity. And uh, it would be really interesting to see a new piece of land or property or, or some way that would appear and how it would develop. I mean, can you imagine? If they were a, if, allowed to try, right? Like now yeah. they've got these Croatian goon squad going in there and arresting people on property that ostensibly isn't Croatia's, that has never been claimed apparently by Croatia. It was previously, I think, Serbia's. Yeah. But, you know, governments don't really respect that. I mean, look how much stuff the U.S. goes in and arrests people in other countries. So, you know, yeah. it's not anything new. Well, who's going to hold them accountable? Right. I mean, it. There's no protection for this poor guy. They can run him through whatever they want to do, the Croatian government. And, and they, they probably will. They just, because he's probably embarrassed their government and, you know, they're going to make an issue well, of it. Well, I mean, they embarrass themselves, right? It's always, they're My, the ones who make yeah. it, uh, make the publicity. They're the ones who put themselves out there in such a ridiculous manner, in such a violent, a clearly violent yeah. manner. And all you've got to do is record it and then show the world and they look ridiculous. Same thing with like Ro the Robin Hood of Keene situation here in, in Keene, New Hampshire, where once the city government actually filed the lawsuit is when all the press coverage happened for us. That's when we yeah, started getting Good Morning America that. and the Today Show and, you know, international press and all over the place. I can't imagine what it would cost to buy a four-minute advertising millions. spot on NBC in the morning show. It would know? probably be in the millions of dollars. I know we actually were told what Good Morning America cost, and it was like $2 million a minute or something like that. Yeah, and I think you got a four-segment piece. That's crazy yeah. coverage for this. And it's it's the same thing through history. If you study these, you know, David versus Goliath situations where it's a little guy taking on a large entity, basically the only thing you can do is get them to tip their hat on something ridiculous to win the support of the people, to win the hearts and minds. You have to have them uh, expose what they are. And this yep. is a clear example. They sent... What did he say? They, they they sent a whole squad of troops. They, and they rallied held as there. many cops as they possibly could yeah, to, to go out and arrest these people for going in to a swamp. swamp. <laughs> yeah, sitting in a swamp. <laughs> I mean, how much effort did that take in, in dealing with the processing and the bad press? I mean, they would have been smart just to leave him alone, and this probably— Well, I mean, I guess they don't want to leave him alone because they really clearly want to do everything they can to stop Liberland from existing, right? I mean, that yeah. seems to be what's going on here. This isn't about some people who want to go camp in the woods, right? Oh. Like, if they, were just, if they were just some folks who wanted to go camp on a swampy island— then no one would care about it. They they probably wouldn't be even noticed by the no. Croatian government. But. but because they're declaring their own independence. It it kind of gives me hope though, because if land were to appear or some way that, you know, people could move to one area, like the sea setting project or the Free State Project, um, just the amount of people that wanted to come is it blows me away how much press Liberland got. Oh yeah. And that's that's a very promising thing. There, there's that many people unhappy with their governments that they would flood into a free place. That's an excellent uh, perspective. I mean, I hadn't really even considered that. But, yeah, I mean, you're talking about the hundreds of thousands of applications to Liberland. When they formed Liberland and they got all that press coverage, when people would go to the Facebook page and their website, yeah. it would say, hey, if you'd like to apply to be a citizen, you can apply here. Here's what you need to do. And they had 30,000 within like a day, 50,000 within two days. And then after a couple of weeks, it was up to 300,000 applications. I don't know what the current status. I think it might be half a million or something like right. that. Right. Imagine if you could have an area that was actually free. I mean, this is a promising thing because we only think about with the Free State Project, about the states around us and people in America. But you forget the rest of the world is screaming out to be free. And if you could open something up to the world, that oh, it'd be everybody, amazing. it would be like floods of refugees that would come in and, I mean, political, you know, people trying to get away. I would love for that to happen here in New Hampshire, but unfortunately, we're a, we're a secession away from that even being a possibility. And even, even once you secede, you'll still have to deal with the people who want to keep the borders closed, right? Because, yeah. you know, there's, there's different kinds of people who support secession. So even though you and I support secession for reasons of liberty, there could be people who want secession because they want more control over somebody. Right. They want a smaller a smaller thing to control. And that's a good point. Everybody has different reasons. But it is a neat idea that it's getting this much attention. I mean, you're talking about something the size of basically like the Vatican. You know, the, you know, the Vatican's mm -hmm. its own country. Right. 
and it's it's the same idea that it's it's just, what is this thing like two two miles long or well, three I mean, miles something and why like that? Is, and, right, the Vatican is no less people legit. People want right? passports from here. Yeah, well, the Vatican's no less legitimate of a country than Spain same size. or yeah. you know same Andorra rights. or Hong Kong or China. I mean, it's just an idea. That's all these things are. That's all countries are. They're just ideas, and so. The Liberland idea is fundamentally no different from the rest of those. It's just newer. So they have this establishment issue where they're trying to get recognized, unfortunately, by all these other countries who don't want to recognize them because, well, Liberland would provide competition. It would attract away those hundreds of thousands of people if you could fit them all in that. If you could create some sort of stability at a free place like that, you could just watch the businesses flood in. I mean, that would be the first people to go in. Are the corporations? Oh, no taxes, no regulations. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> you know. All right, we'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts with us at eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. This is Free Talk Live. We've also got Skype. Skype in at username lrn.fm, and you can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. The people that fought the Korean War and, frankly, the Afghan War won because those people are the military-industrial complex. And what they wanted is they want things that go boom to, to go boom so that they can build more things that go boom. That the purpose of the war isn't freedom, it's not justice, it's not any of these higher concepts that, in fact, um, you know, that the, the lives, uh, minds, and bodies of the people that are going out there and uh, fighting for these wars, that they they are inconsequential to the politicians and so the people for whom the they work. So you're saying the state won these wars the in Vietnam won. and Afghanistan. The state won, but the individuals who fought the war, they're the ones that took the brunt of it. They're the ones that lost. That's right. And I, and I totally agree. They do enough to make it seem like they're doing something and to keep us happy enough just to control it. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot reach time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? 
Democrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live and, of course, plenty of time for you to share your thoughts with us here about whatever's on your mind. Was the New York Stock Exchange hacked? Or was this just some sort of internal technical glitch today? Uh, well, there's an interesting perspective over at the independent.co.uk that Anonymous might possibly have been involved. Uh, so we can continue. Uh, we'll talk about that here. Our toll-free number again is 855-450-FREE. Uh, it's Ian and Taryn in the studio with you here tonight. And I also want to let you know about purse.freetalklive.com. This is your opportunity to get a raise. Because if you're spending, let's say, 20 or 25% less on the things you buy in life, that's kind of like getting a raise, right? If you can go and get the same stuff you're going to get right now, but save 20 or 25% or maybe even more off of those products, you're doing better. And you can do that by going to purse.freetalklive.com. You can spend Bitcoin to get those huge discounts on anything on Amazon. So let's say you want to get Taryn Lupo's books. Ah, yes, do that. Because they All are available. <laughs> Taryn, you're not going to miss out on anything, even though the no. person getting the book ultimately is going to save maybe 20 to 25% or something like that. You're going to get all your money out of it because somebody's essentially buying it for them as a gift on uh, Amazon, and then they're sending them Bitcoin through purse.freetalklive.com. How, so, how does it work if you want to return something? Like if I buy something and I don't like it and I send it back to Amazon, where does how does Purse handle that? Amazon does have a gifts re, uh, return process, and honestly, I'm not sure how that works with, uh, with Purse, but I know that in the instances I've needed Purse's customer service, and I have a couple times, they've been they awesome. They handle it. Okay, cool. They have been awesome. There's Good nothing enough. bad you can say about uh, Purse's customer service. And that was before they had approached us, or, you know, the, it's not like the customer service reps knew it was Ian from Free Talk Live or something like that. It was before, long before, because uh, so, I was using Purse since before they came on board as uh, as a sponsor of Free Talk Live. So go try it for yourself. You can go and create your account right now at purse.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Tom. He is calling from the state of Jefferson on Skype. Tom, you're on Free Talk Live. Well, hello, Ian. Hi, you're on with Ian and Taryn. Yes, and hi, Taryn. Hey. Um, we here in the state of Jefferson, I don't know how familiar you folks are with the state of Jefferson, but we're yeah, trying it's, to... Uh, it's the area, uh, was it South Oregon, North California? Right. Yeah. Oh, exactly. nice job. And... Uh, <laughs> It's a secession movement. I should know these things. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, Tom. Go ahead. Well, for your, the new listeners, I'd like to know what it is. Yeah. So. All right. Well, the state of Jefferson uh, is basically Northern California, the northernmost uh, 20 counties of California. And we're starting to get some interest from, uh, from some counties in Southern Oregon also. The state of Jefferson almost happened in 1941. They formed a provisional government. Uh, they were due to announce it, and they chose, of all days, December 8th, 1941, and we all know what happened on oh, December 7th. Man. Um, so Pearl when World Harbor. War II started in Pearl Harbor, they dropped, they dropped it. Uh, there have been over 120 Damn. attempts in the past to split the state of California, and even Mexico considered uh, the northern part of this, of this area when it was Mexico, they considered it a separate state, too. Uh, it was almost split in the 20s, almost 120 times. Um, at the moment, we have uh, eight counties on board signing declarations to overturn a court case called Reynolds versus Sims. And um, once we get standing from a majority of the county to go after Reynolds versus Sims, we're going to ask the state legislature to introduce legislation to enable the split. Uh, what they should, okay, first of all, what is Reynolds versus Sims, and why is it so important to, to turn that over before you can move on with what you're doing? Reynolds versus Sims is, is huge to rural America. Uh, what Reynolds versus Sims is, is in effect when the Warren Court legislated the one-person, one-vote concept on the entire United States. Uh, 
previous to Reynolds versus Sims, the California state legislature was modeled after the federal government. And we had roughly one state senator per county. Uh, after Reynolds versus Sims, for example, uh, the county I'm in, Mendocino, shares uh, uh, a senator with Marin County, Sonoma County, Mendocino County, Humboldt County, and Del Norte County. So there are um, fewer senators now in California as a result of this Reynolds versus Sims? No, in, in essence, we now have approximately, effectively, we have one and a half senators that represent all state senators that represent all of Northern California. Los Angeles County alone has, has um, about... 25. Oh, I see what you're saying. So there had been previously in each, so there was one senator per county. Is that right? And then now there's just like. Reynolds, what's Reynolds versus Sims caused the, uh, the, the the state Senate to be apportioned by population. Yeah. Just like assembly. Okay. Gotcha. So we have effectively uh, six legislators that represent us up here in Northern California. So your political influence has dropped uh, significantly. And this Reynolds versus Sims is a U.S. Supreme Court case. U.S. Supreme Court case, uh, it was already overturned once in uh, Nioba County, Wyoming. And there's also a Supreme Court case in play right now being considered by the Supreme Court in Texas, wh which will overturn, which may overturn Reynolds versus Sims. And uh, well, how can they overturn case, Reynolds versus Sims at a lower court? If it was this a, is a this is a Supreme Court case. It's a U.S. Supreme Court case, but I, what you're saying is it was overturned in Montana. How? It, it was overturned for that specific county in in Wyoming. You Wyoming. mean you mean the Supreme Court overturned itself for one exactly. specific location? Exactly. Weird. Exactly. Now Texas is bringing up a case to try and overturn Reynolds versus Sims, and and um, you guys are as well in Jefferson. Yes, we are. Okay. So this that makes. This movement to split the state uh, different than all the others. So uh, we believe that uh, when we approach the state legislature, are you familiar with the constitutional process for a state split? Uh, so let's see. For a state split, you would need, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, you'd need the uh, California legislature to sort of let you go. And then further, you would need the U.S. Legis uh, legislative body to accept uh, the state of Jefferson as a state. Exactly. Exactly. But why would you want to do the latter portion? Uh, why not just leave the United States entirely? Uh, well, that's a big step. Um, we feel we could get adequate freedom through proper exercise of states' rights and that the state is more effective in, in uh, acquiring those rights than completely going out on our own. Mm -hmm. as a separate nation it you, would be um uh probably just about impossible to get congress to let us go and form a nation so that would be a big battle in itself well it would seem to me that i guess it is kind of tricky right because you want to secede from california and in my case i would want to secede from the united states entirely but seceding <laughs> from california of course would would sort of well, it's, a, it's kind of just a tricky legal situation, I guess, that in my opinion, if you're going to secede from the U.S., you don't need their permission. You just, you know, make the political decision to, OK, we're done with this. Well, you know, there's New the Hampshire decision, were to do that. and there's the arms defense of the new state that is not. So you, you're worried that, that you would be raided, uh, that you would be invaded by the United States. Well, absolutely. So, Look what happened yeah. to the Confederacy. Yeah. So, you know, there's not like there's not historical precedent to demonstrate that, uh, Yes, if the United States wants something, they'll go take it. So, um, well, you could let so, them invade and then sue them for reparations. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody get rich. It's a great idea. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so the next step is to overturn that court decision and then try to get the votes in California. But ha that sounds like it'd be very, very, very difficult. Well, we're gonna we use the uh, the court decision as leverage to let get the state to let us go. Uh, in essence. The legislature of California is largely a monoparty democratic institution. Mm. And if we are successful in uh, if if we are successful in overturning Reynolds versus Sims, what will happen is a whole bunch of Republican senators will show up in Sacramento. We believe uh. the uh, 
Did we believe the uh, the Democratic legislature would be happy to let us go? Yeah, no, I see where you're coming from. I hope you'll keep us in the loop as to uh, how this develops. Very interested in it. Uh, thank you for the call tonight, Tom. I think the, uh, the state of Jefferson is definitely one of the more lively secession groups out there. And we need more of them. More on the way. It's Free Talk Live. You, me, and BTC is your Bitcoin and Liberty podcast. Cryptocurrency decrypted. We're sitting down with Mr. Jason King. If you want to f*** with the government, <laughs> feed homeless people, man. Jeffrey Tucker, what's possible in the Bitcoin space? It sounds a little like science fiction, but if you wait enough time, it becomes a reality. Angela Keaton from Antiwar.com. This is what the United States does. It involves killer robots. For Bitcoiners, this is a way to get around that. Subscribe at you, me, and BTC.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wondered if you could make electric, light, or heat in your home for free? How about a motor that charges batteries at the same time? What if this also restores useless batteries and saves you lots of money? Come to our Renaissance Charge Conference Workshop on August 15th and 16th in Fort Lauderdale. Visit r-charge.com. That's r-charge.com for details. Or call 208-304-2954. 208-304-2954. Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey System. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now, I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here if you want to. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. With you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Taryn Lupo. I have 
basically committed regicide and taking King Mark's seat uh, for tonight. <laughs> also, I just always wanted to say regicide on, yeah, I mean, how often do you get word. to use that word? <laughs> the, the killing of a king, right? Yeah. The, the, the murder of a king? <laughs> well, I didn't murder him. I just took his throne. I that guess would I be usurped. Usurp. I usurped you, you him. You usurped his throne. Yeah, uh, that's a cool word to say too. On air. yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> there was an old BBS door game called Usurper that uh, was a lot of fun. All right, so toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. We've got Skype. Skype on in here at username lrn.fm. By the way, so far all Skype calls tonight both have sounded great. So if you want to sound really good when you're on the radio with us, uh, definitely call us on Skype. That's right. Even from a Croatian jail cell in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> you can still call in in a swamp. Yeah, we'll so, so we were discussing uh, Liberland and the arrests, the most recent arrests. There have yeah, been those four guys. The, it was four recently. We heard from Krom, who was one of the four that was arrested. And then uh, prior to that, there were like two dozen other people that have been arrested for just going on to this plot of land that ostensibly was not claimed by any country. Although now it seems to be an occupied territory by these Croatian government goons who have been uh, kidnapping everybody that comes on the property. So it's pretty terrible what's been happening out there, and we're going to continue to follow it as closely as we can here. It's, I think it's absolutely fascinating. Those guys deserve a lot of credit. Those are some brave activists. You know, Anybody who, who takes the risk of going out there to Liberland at this point is basically taking a severe risk of getting arrested and getting thrown into some sort of awful Croatian prison. Well, I kind of see their strategy because this is a, a Who's play- strategy. Liberland? The, the Liberland guys. This is kind of a playbook of um, activism that's been used here is basically um, you you become such a thorn in the side, a nonviolent thorn. I mean, they're just there doing their thing. Mm-hmm that um, you're just not worth it to arrest anymore. Like, it, it'll get to the point where every time these police arrest them, it's going to be an international story. It's going to be, you know... Is it, though, an international uh, I story? I, I mean, Liberland got international. It I would did. Imagine... It got international press when it formed, but I suspect these arrests are not getting international coverage. <laughs> hmm. I mean, yes, Free Talk Live is international. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're on but... satellite all in lots of parts of the globe. That's right. But, Some Africans uh, can hear us now. Lots of Africans can, can <laughs> listen now, in fact. Uh, but but anyway, you know, so yes, we're international, but are we seeing this in, you know, major mainstream media? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so yet, but I, I don't think this is played this is done i have a feeling it's definitely uh, not done yeah i I have a feeling they're just gonna have to ramp it up and and to get to the point i mean what else can they do they can keep setting up and getting arrested and keep getting setting up and it it has to the only way these activists can win is just to become such a pain that it's not worth dealing well that's true and what we have seen in the different instances of civil disobedience that have happened here in new hampshire is that numbers makes a huge difference so, so far, it seems like they've been being arrested in batches of two to four. If they could get 30, as many people who've been arrested thus far, 30 people, if they could get 30 people to go over there at one time, they would vastly outnumber the Croatian forces. And whenever you vastly outnumber the police, it changes how they behave. They are less likely to do things that are aggressive and dangerous and stupid if there are a bunch of uh, pairs of eyeballs standing around. And so that would be interesting to see what happens. But, of course, getting your activism movement to the point where you can have 30 people who are willing to actually uh, be arrested for something like that, because that's what they would have to essentially be committing to is the knowledge that you're going to get arrested. And 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 right now we don't know exactly what the penalties are are going to be. I mean, uh, Crom called earlier. He's going to court on the 14th. Hopefully we'll get an update after that. There have been these other arrests. Honestly, I haven't heard what, if any of those court cases have panned out and how they panned out. So, you know, there's risk involved. And so same same problem sort of applies here in New Hampshire, where we've got this movement of liberty-minded folks. People from all around the world are coming here as part of the Free State Project. And there have been some civilly disobedient activists. I've been arrested for civil disobedience. Derek J. Freeman has uh, been arrested for civil disobedience. But we were arrested at different times, you know, in different sort of periods, if you will, over time uh, of the Free State Project. And so there are very few instances where we've had large groups of people who've been engaging in civil disobedience in a way that the police were aware of it. So like the 420 celebrations here are the biggest example of that, I think, over time. And there have been some other ones uh, that that, I I can think of, usually having to do with marijuana. 
because it's easier to motivate someone to come out for that issue because you can get a lot of people. <laughs> but uh, you know, to, in in Liberland's case, they'd have to get enough people from the surrounding uh, Europe yeah. Europe region to be willing to come there and and get arrested, and that's a well, tricky thing to do. They have enough interest. It's just probably getting the logistics of people that are actually in the country that can cross over and they're willing to take the risk probably knocks the number way down. But, I mean, looking at their online interest, I mean, you know, hundreds of thousands of likes and lots of attention. Absolutely. I, I don't know if they could organize that and turn that into, okay, can we get 300 people in this swamp to stand around for a week and see what happens? I mean, look how fast the Occupy thing happened. Oh, uh, yeah, it Nobody took off. expected that to blow up, but it did pretty quickly. And uh, that came out of nowhere. I didn't see that coming at all. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there certainly are people who are willing to take the risk. And it's just finding them is really the trickiest part, unless they do just sort of automatically gravitate and this becomes something that happens sort of on its own. Um, somebody's going to have to put that out there. And obviously, I can't, you know, I'm not going to be the person to do that. I'm just the guy talking on the radio about it. I like to do the things that I talk about, <laughs> so I feel bad that I can't uh, can't be involved, but... Uh, oh yeah, you know, it's it's fascinating to watch, and uh, we will definitely continue to do that. the The Liberland, the development of Liberland, this new country, this three square mile uh, project in between Serbia and Croatia, which right now people are not being allowed to physically set foot on said property, and uh, there have been dozens of arrests, and I imagine there will there will be more uh, over time. So share your thoughts with us here tonight, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So it's interesting, like, we've been looking at these two different secession sort of movements here because we were talking about the differences. There's the Liberland, which is not a secessionist movement per se. Yeah, what would you it's, call that? Maybe a They're creating a, a new country. I, yeah, a migration to a, a open land. I, uh, that's what it is in theory, yeah. but that's not that hasn't happened successfully yet. Right now, the, the idea of Liberland has been created. And that idea is being resisted by the Croatian government people. So you've got the the sort of genesis of a new country in unclaimed land. I don't know what you call that. If there's like a word for that, I don't know it. And then over in the state of Jefferson, you've got people who are already in North California, Southern Oregon, who want to escape those areas and create their own 51st state. So they've got a whole other set of challenges you know, that, that, that they're involved in. Mm. I just, you know, I hate to be the, the parrot that keeps going back to this, but all the effort they're trying to do to break California off, if they put that effort in here in New Hampshire, you know, those people. Oh, yeah, it'd be incredible. Why, why recreate the wheel, man? <laughs> you know, well, like come you know here why. And, and, I mean, it takes, uh, you it's know, it's, so, it's hard to move. It's such it, a pipe dream to try to crack a piece of California. Some of them might be farmers to, too, right? Like people uh, with uh, big farms in Northern California. We've had whatever. farmers move here for the FSP. You know, it's just no a matter doubt. of the growing season's different. How, here. Gotta, yeah, that's true. And, 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 and how hard it is. And I get that, but it, to me, it's like, do you stand and fight in this one piece of area? I mean, I moved from Georgia cause there was no hope for Georgia. Yeah, you know, for I'm, sure. I, there's no way. <laughs> so I uh, I got it. So. And most people would say there's no hope for California, but I imagine the reason why the people in the state of Jefferson feel the way they do is they feel that Northern California, California. isn't California, yeah, that it's, it's something else. And they're paying for everything else, probably. Of course, they're on yeah. the hook for uh, for all the spending that the, the big cities want to be involved in. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I so, mean, but, but the natural sort of human tendency is to stay put, right? I mean, yeah, there's yeah, people who have wanderlust. And family and That's, all there's that certainly stuff. people who have wanderlust, but uh, most people, they put down roots in a place, and it's very hard for people to uproot. I mean, it, how long did it take you to get up here? Oh, right? forever. Yeah. Right? And so I get that. I, I, I understand, but what I'm trying to say is I never tried to start a secessionist movement in Georgia because it was a lost <laughs> yeah. cause. You know, no, I get where you're coming I'm from. I'm not going to put my energy in there. I just waited till I get here. Well, I mean, which one is more of a lost cause, if either of them? Uh, you know, like comparing the state of Jefferson to Liberland, they're both up against different challenges, sort of from a legalistic perspective. I think if which Liber one's a, a, a more of a crapshoot? Which one is? Le I think least Liberland likely? is a re more realistic if they can get it's more people. likely. You think for yeah, Liberland. because it's 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 a gray area and it, mm -hmm. it's there's a lot of uh, legal loopholes and. And a lot of things they can play to their advantage where I trying agree. to create a new state is you're really swimming upstream, you know. 
Where I, I think yeah, that's true. Especially if, can, if you have to get permission from the U.S. government. Like you oh, said, wow. it's a population thing. If you can get enough people in there and to just set up and start doing it, I think the game's over. There, they're just going to let it go. It is always about numbers. Yeah. It's always about numbers. The toll-free number here, in fact, a bunch of numbers: eight fifty five four fifty free. 855-450-3733. Also, join us on Skype at Skype username lrn.fm was anonymous behind the takedown oh, yeah. of the New York Stock Exchange. That happened today. We'll talk about it. This is Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. This is Shaquille O'Neal. And the Shaquettes. Reminding you that anytime, anytime is a good time. Good time. For the cooling, drying, fresh scent of gold bond powder spray. Like after the gym. Or a crowded elevator ride. Or golf. Or working with farm animals. Or a hard day's work. Like sports casting. You said it, ladies. Stay cool with gold bond powder spray. Stay cool with gold bond. <laughs> I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, July 8th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.05 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,157 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $272. Antiwar.com reports U.S. drones launched a pair of attacks against a village in the Nangarhar province, housing what they believe are militants loyal to the Islamic State, killing a total of 49 people. Government spokesmen insist everyone killed was a militant. Afghan officials also reported in the wake of the strikes that they believe one of the slain was Gul Zaman, who they believe is the second highest ranking official in Afghanistan's the Islamic State. Zaman was one of six Pakistani Taliban who joined the Islamic State back in October. It is unclear so far how big the Islamic State is in Afghanistan, as the group is mostly cobbled together out of Taliban defectors. So far, they have fought against the Taliban primarily, though in the long run, they will likely attack the Afghan government and NATO as well. The Islamic State influence is growing on both sides of the country, with clashes with the Taliban reported against Nangarhar and in the far southwest. It is unclear how much, if any, support they are getting from the parent, the Islamic State organization, as the Raqqa-based leadership typically waits for affiliates to reach a certain size before it starts to back them. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
UPI reports a statue of the Ten Commandments will remain on the Oklahoma State Capitol grounds while Governor Mary Fallon considers rewriting the state's constitution to make the presence of the monument legally permissible. Fallon issued a statement Tuesday saying that in addition to filing an appeal of the Oklahoma Supreme Court's order to remove the statue, she wants to make sure it's clear the monument is legal according to the Oklahoma Constitution. She said the Ten Commandments monument was built to recognize and honor the historical significance of the commandments in our state's and nation's system of laws. She added, it is virtually identical to a monument on the grounds of the Texas State Capitol, which the U.S. Supreme Court ruled was permissible. Last week, the state's highest court ruled the statue must be removed in accordance with the state constitution, which bans the use of public property for the benefit of any religious purpose. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. Reuters reports South Carolina Senate passed legislation Tuesday to remove the Confederate battle flag from the state's capital grounds, where it has flown for five decades. A bill to banish the flag from the state house grounds to a museum easily passed a third and final 36 to 3 vote in the Senate. The bill is now headed to the state House of Representatives, which voted to bring it to the floor for debate on Wednesday. The legislation was deemed an impossibility only months ago, but it gained strong bipartisan support since nine churches goers were gunned down on June 17th during Bible study at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, about two hours southeast of the state capitol. Photos of Dylan Roof, the man charged in the shooting, showed him posing with a Confederate flag on a website bearing a racist manifesto. A grand jury indicted Roof on nine counts of murder and three counts of attempted murder, according to a prosecutor. The flag's defenders argue that it's part of South Carolina's heritage, representing those who fought and died for the rebellious southern states that formed the Confederate States of America in the 1861 to 1865 Civil War. Republican Senator Lee Bright argued on Tuesday that the flag has been unfairly tied to slavery. He asserted not one Confederate flag flew over a slave ship. He noted that many leaders of the 18th century fight for American independence from Britain were slave owners themselves. While most politicians recognize that the banner is part of the state's heritage, many agree it should no longer be flown in a public place. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Yesterday, two groups of men shot at each other near to Bagram Base, where I am. Today, the soldiers are happy about some of the men dying and sad about other men dying. Sergeant First Class Aaron Tomlin is only sad about four of the dead people. It's, it's a long, tough day here. Uh, we lost four good men. No. 27 men died, four American soldiers and 23 Taliban soldiers. You said that four soldiers die and it makes you sad, but you said when Taliban soldiers die, it does not make you sad. I asked Base Commander David Hawkins to make it make sense. The last thing we resort to is hurting anyone, but you have to understand it's our job to keep the American people safe from our enemies, and sometimes that includes- So if you kill your enemies at your job, it is not sad? Well- it... What if I killed my enemy Ryan at my job? It would not be sad? No, no, you shouldn't do that. But he is rude to me. He steals my yogurts. He makes fun of the way I talk. Look, only soldiers can kill without getting in trouble. Okay. Are you going to kill Ryan? No. It does not make sense. This is the Onion News Network. Welcome back to more Free Talk Live. You can join us right here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We also have Skype and the Skype username that you need to connect to is lrn.fm. Do send a contact request first. We will approve it. And then after that, you'll be good to go to call us on Skype. And joining us, Ian and Taryn, we're already here for the first hour. Joining us now uh, on the third microphone, Daryl. Hey, man. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. Good to have you here uh, tonight. You're sort of stranded, so we figured we'd rope you in and yes. uh, <laughs> and talk talk with you here. That's basically how you get all, all your help here. <laughs> they just their car breaks down, and you're like, "Oh, okay, we got a new here, talk a show microphone. host." Hey. Uh, so yeah, you can still call in. You heard some of our conversation we were having in the last hour. Uh, I'm sure about the state of Jefferson. We had a yes. caller call in about that. 
uh, which is the area of Northern California, Southern Oregon. There's some sort of rural areas that want to secede from those states and form their own state. We were also talking about Liberland, where arrests continue uh, to occur by the Croatian government. And you're a big secession fan. Uh, anything you want to add into those discussions? Yeah, so the state of Jefferson thing is kind of interesting to me. Actually, all of the secessionist movements within the U.S. are interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, there are some that are different than others. So we talked briefly on, I believe it was Friday, about the North Colorado thing to right. where there were, I think, 11 counties in Colorado that wanted to secede from Colorado to form a new state. And then there's other kinds of secessionist movements out in California. There was the Six Californias uh, initiative wound up not getting enough signatures uh. to wind up getting on the ballot. And the state of Jefferson would have been one of the six new states to form from, you know, splitting up California. Right. And Davi Barker, the Muslim agorist, I was talking to him about this because he lives in California and he said, even though I don't vote, I support this for no other reason than it shows people that lines on maps can change. Yeah, I think that is an important idea. And getting those ideas out there is uh, is really important. That's one of the reasons why you and I formed the New Hampshire Liberty Party yes. uh, with some other folks. And uh, Taryn was actually just asking, as uh, somebody who's relatively new to New Hampshire, having just made the move, what, a couple months ago, I think? Yeah, Something not like even, that. really. Uh, so, you know, we formed it back in 2012. There's also the Foundation for New Hampshire Independence, which just recently did some outreach. Actually, on July 4th, they were in To Manchester. the governor. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, Renee from Seditious Sirens and Anne from Seditious Sirens encountered uh, New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan and co ca sort of cornered her about the issue of secession. Unfortunately, it wasn't recorded on video. So. Yeah, and from what I heard, uh, Maggie said, don't you know who I am? And they're like, <laughs> no, no, we don't. Uh, and that that's sort of like the hallmark of somebody with a giant ego, right, is asking oh, yeah. the question, don't you know who I am? And if you have I don't know to if she ask asked that it like question, that, but. <laughs> right, but no, like if you have to ask that question, then obviously yeah. nobody knows who you are. Like Reese Why should Witherspoon. They? Got arrested for, like, DUI several years ago. Uh -huh. And when the cop pulls her over and said, you know, like, license registration, she's like, don't you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, no, I don't. License oh, and registration. Yeah, I imagine for a lot of cops, that line is going to ensure you don't get a break on the ticket, right? You know, a lot of <laughs> yeah. cops will be like, I gave you a break today. Uh, that's not going to get you the break. I'm pretty sure way. Hagen says it like 10 times a day. <laughs> Brian Hagen. <laughs> Any chance he gets. All right, so, so toll-free number tonight if you want to share your thoughts on secession. Uh, sounds like the state of Jefferson is alive and well as far as uh, you know, an activist movement I, is I concerned. know that there are people involved yep. because one of the radio stations that we have, I think they carry us on weekends, they're in that state of Jefferson area. Yeah. And the former program director there, we had a fairly lengthy conversation about some of the stuff going on there at the state of Jefferson to where they're actually trying to organize and have the county delegates vote on like moving forward with secession, take it to Sacramento, have the legislators there in Sacramento say that, yes, these counties in Northern California can wind up leaving. And then, of course, you've got to go deal with Washington and... That is the Why would that want to do I that? don't understand. Yeah. Like, right? Okay, like just leave. If you want to leave, just leave. I not don't know like you... leave and then move back in with your abusive spouse. That makes no sense. Yeah, I sus Were you listening during that part of the call from State of Jefferson? I was not. I did uh. actually ask the guy from State of Jefferson. I said, "Why would you want to do the latter portion of asking to come into the United States? Why would you want to go through that?" And his answer was basically fear of invasion. And that was essentially it. Oh, well, you know, we know what happens when uh, someone tries to secede. There's an invasion. Uh, the Civil War essentially was the right. excuse. And to me, that's the reason why you should secede and secede as peacefully as possible. Because 
you're afraid that the federal government is going to roll tanks in if you tell them you don't want their services anymore. That says you know that you're being ruled by a bunch of tyrants who are killers and very dangerous. And I say give them the opportunity, shine the spotlight on them, and let's go through with it and see what happens. Yeah, mankind has to evolve past this sort of thing. I mean, the idea that... Um, you're so afraid to do anything because you're going to get hurt or arrested. I mean, entire lives revolve around making decisions out of fear. Well, right. I mean, and that, that's not a good place for mankind to be. Right. And I, I go back to the comparison of an abusive spouse because yeah. that's the same rationale that the abused person gives is, sure. well, if I leave, he'll wind up hurting me worse. If I leave, he might kill me. Well, if you Mm -hmm. stay, he might kill you. Yep, that's absolutely the case. And the idea that it's an illusion. Like at any time, you're you're not really safe in this country. The government can take your property, your children, can take your life, can just put you in a cell for as long as you want. I mean, sorry, for as long as they want. Absolutely. Um, That can happen right now. Right now, they could round up everyone I know and put them away, and there's not a damn thing we could do about it. Okay, so that's on the table. How about you stop living in fear and focus on what can we do and, you know, stop pretending that we're free. We're, we're not until you say you're free. And if you're making your whole life's decision on fear, it's a really unhealthy place to be. I totally agree. And in fact, it's, it's interesting. You know, you look at the, we we're talking about how it's about the numbers. If they have the numbers of people to have a successful secession movement in Northern California and Southern Oregon, then they have the numbers of people to, you know, sort of make a stand together for something bigger. And so why not stand for something bigger? And that is to leave the United States. It is it is totally based out of fear. And that's how people are trained, right? Like, you know, people don't want to die. There's that natural inclination to con- want to continue their life. And they know that the governments are certainly more than happy to take people's lives from them. So... But You're afraid of that. No, it's it's crazy to me because this is one thing I got to get out that drives me crazy. At any time, the government can just take you for no reason if they want. That's and, true. And until you realize that and understand that um, – you're going to make decisions on fear, like, oh, I better walk the line. I better not stir any waves. I better do this. I better do that. Too bad, man. You know what? They can take you right now, and you could be the perfect citizen. So stop being the perfect citizen and be free instead. I, I, I've sort of thought argument. through this a little bit. And let, let me try to make an analogy here with the state of Jefferson. So it, it seems to me that most of the people, not just state of Jefferson, but also like North Colorado and some of these other let's form a new state within the U.S., they probably see their state government as the more abusive parent and the federal Mm. government as a slightly less abusive parent. Okay. So, like, I don't want to live with mom anymore because she's really, really, really mean. (laughs) I'd rather live with dad because he's only kind of mean. Yeah. He'll beat me a little less. Right. So, you know, like they, they want to get get away from the really abusive parent to go live with the one that's not as abusive, but still abusive. Yeah. OK. I see where you're coming from there. Not that that's justification. for, for Right. No, point, I, I said yeah. rationale. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you can share your thoughts with us here. Our toll free number is 855-450-FREE. I mean, I wish them the best of luck. I hope that it pans out and they overturn this court case that they want to overturn that will, uh, in their their minds, allow them to more effectively leave California. And then it would be interesting to see what would happen from that point. You know, how would the U.S. government treat a decision like that? Our toll free number is 855-450-FREE if you want to share your thoughts. Coming up, the New York Stock Exchange was anonymous involved in today's takedown. It's Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. Are you suffering with hearing loss? Are you sick of people constantly complaining that your TV is too loud? Are you tired of asking people to speak up? Would you like to hear more clearly, but you don't want to wear a hearing aid that makes you look old? Then you need to try Listen Clear, a life-changing breakthrough precisely designed by top audio engineers to fit your ear almost invisibly. And you can adjust Listen Clear to find the perfect way to hear everything, wherever you are, and whatever you're doing. And now we're extending our in home trial to let you try Listen Clear risk free for a full 45 days with free shipping. We'll even give you free batteries for life. Call now 1 800 956 9829. 
Listen Clear is lightweight and completely hassle-free, and it's practically invisible. Call for your extended 45-day in-home trial with free shipping and free batteries for life. For free information, call now. 1-800-956-9829. That's 1-800-956-9829. 1-800-956-9829. If you're worried about your health and you're tired of the nasty side effects of harsh drugs or antibiotics, then look no further. Supernatural Silver is the answer. Supernatural Silver is a powerful immune system enhancer that can be used every day to help keep you healthy and well with none of those nasty side effects. It's extremely safe for use internally as well as topically. And Supernatural Silver is hundreds of times more effective than colloidal or ionic silver. It is perfect for use in the sinuses, eyes, ears, and on any wound or skin issue. Supernatural Silver is also extremely effective when taken orally and can help fight off bacteria, viruses, and mold that may be overwhelming your immune system. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com SupernaturalSilver.com and use the promo code SILVER2015 for 30% off of your entire order and give yourself and your loved ones a fighting chance with Supernatural Silver. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road underground market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. With you tonight, you've got me, Ian. Daryl. And Taryn, relegated to third seat now. Taryn, uh, <laughs> no, you're in the second seat. Oh, I'm you're still in King the, Mark's seat. You're across the uh, the aisle here. Uh, Taryn, where can people find your books um, The easiest place to go is just TarynLupo.com. Mm-hmm. It is just... Um, Kind of a hot page to everything I do, so you can find uh, my books. Uh, my most of my effort right now is my YouTube channel. That's where I'm putting a lot of time in. And oh, is it LCL Report or did you create LCL a new one? LCL still, uh, yeah, but it, it's still LCL Report, but it's just you know, Taryn Lupo is because I do so much more than news. You know, I, I do a lot of star- stories on uh, farming. I made a okay. documentary on farming that that does quite well on YouTube. And cool. uh, currently, I'm working on uh, something for Muslims for Liberty, which should be out very soon. Oh man, I've lost track of the channel. I have to make sure I'm subscribed to it. So uh, yeah, it's so a, what's the channel name again? Um, you can find it. it is it on TaranLupo.com? Yeah, you find it TaranLupo.com. Just okay. go there. Perfect. TaranLupo.com, and that's T-A-R-R-I-N Lupo. 
right? Yeah. Okay. You spelled it right. So proxpn.com slash FTL is where you can go to get 50% off of the regular monthly price of this awesome service for your, not just your computer, but your smartphone, laptop, whatever it is you're using, Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux. They will encrypt your internet connection at ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network. You get 50% off the regular monthly price when you buy the annual account with code FTL50 at ProXPN.com slash FTL. And with that, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world, private torrenting ability, and you can get past regionally blocked websites. And ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. And use promo code FTL50 for a great discount on privacy that is priceless. So we've been talking about secession and we're discussing specifically the state of Jefferson, the idea of separating Northern California and Southern Oregon uh, from their uh, states, their respective states, and then creating a 51st state if the U.S. government gives them permission. We were talking about, well, you know, how would... The U.S. government respond to if they were successful to break away this this area of land, these people breaking away politically from California. Maybe they'll try for Oregon later, but at the very least, California would they think is going to be possible. And uh, what happens? What happens next? Well, if the U.S. government acts as quickly, and I'm using that term uh, very loosely. As quickly as they've acted in response to Puerto Rico, absolutely nothing will happen. And the reason I say that is because a couple of years ago, there was a uh, plebiscite in Puerto Rico. That's a really important vote. Yes, it's basically a referendum, but it was not necessarily binding, but, you know, really important vote. So. Uh, For the first time, they had a two-question plebiscite, where in years past, when they had these votes on change of status, it's always been, here's five options, which one do you want? And nothing wound up getting a majority, so the results were basically just an opinion poll with nothing happening. Well, the most recent plebiscite that they had, the first question was, do you want to change your status? Question number Meaning two. Meaning of the state? Puerto Rico is not a state. It's or, a territory. Sorry, the territory. So do, do you want to change your status? Do you okay. want to no longer be a territory? And then the options were statehood, independence, or state in free association. And that's a term that a lot of people aren't familiar with. I see the confusion on your face. Mm-hmm. So the Federated States of Micronesia are a state and free association, meaning that they're essentially independent. They're members of the UN, but some of their stuff, such as postal service and military, is provided for by the U.S. government. Really? But they can, like, break the contract pretty much at any time. Either party can. So they're kind of independent, but the, you know, important stuff gets handled by the U.S. government. So those were the three options given to the people of Puerto Rico. Statehood won overwhelmingly on that second question. The U.S. Congress has not done anything since that vote. And when was was the vote? I'm sorry. Not binding. When when was the vote? Uh, The vote, I believe, was in 2012. Okay. So it's been several years. There's been time. For Congress to do something, but they've not done anything. So So, if the state of Jefferson would wind up forming and they get permission from Sacramento to, you know, like form this new state and leave, it, you know, if we go based off of the actions of Congress of recent, of changing status of territories, yeah, it's going to be a while before anything happens. Would it be considered a territory if they were successfully able to leave California? They would have to get that designation from Congress. Right. So they would essentially be a state or they will be their own country at that point? I mean, what what would it be technically if they were successful to leave California? That's a very good question. Yeah. And I'd have to do some research to see what happened with other sorts of things because the last time— 
that a new state was formed from an existing state was during the American Civil War, also known as Lincoln's War of Aggression, Mm -hmm. where the state of West Virginia seceded from the Commonwealth of Virginia by having this sort of convention thing where they claimed that they were the rightful government of the Commonwealth of Virginia and they were seceding from themselves and gave themselves (laughs) permission to secede. And so... They're Sounds forward. similar. Well, okay. I have to cut in here because I lived in West Virginia for a long time, and they really just did it because they wanted to be able to have all those jokes, West Virginia <laughs> jokes. They, they oh, just, the it one didn't of, sound right about Virginia. You, you know that the toothbrush was created in West Virginia because anywhere else it would be called, <laughs> called a, a teeth toothbrush. Brush. Yes, very well. <laughs> and, uh, that's yeah. terrible. Uh, so there were so many good West Virginia jokes. So that's, that's how that it really went down, but nobody tells you that. <laughs> the only other state... Aside from Maine, to form from an existing state was the Commonwealth of Kentucky that at one time was also part of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that all happened basically by congressional decree where they said, okay, so this really far western part of Virginia is now going to be a new place. So the question is then, uh, when West Virginia seceded from Virginia... What what was it considered, and for how long was it considered that until it was accepted as its own state? So was there a, t- a period of time between when they left Virginia? It was just a couple it, of months uh-huh. during that application process, and it was just considered to be like you know some counties that seceded from a seceding state, even though the U.S. government later says states can't secede, so therefore no. Yeah. So it, it's one of these weird sorts of things to where on the one hand. The federal government says a state can't secede, but at the same time they say, but Virginia seceded, so therefore when West Virginia split, they didn't have to follow the rules in the Constitution Uh, because Virginia had left. I like how they had no imagination. They have a chance to name a whole state, and they're like, I don't know, what are those guys called over there? (laughs) They they wanted to name it Catawba. (laughs) I know. But that lost. All right, we'll come back with more here. Get the joke, man. 855, 450, free. I hadn't heard that word, Catawba. More on the way, Free Talk Live. It's a terrifying thought. You're trapped somewhere without a radio and no access to GCN shows. A doctor's office. The DMV. Your mother-in-laws. Come on, stay for dinner. That's what makes the newly redesigned GCN Live app a true lifesaver. Listen to your favorite GCN hosts and programming on your smartphone, wherever you are. Download yours free on iTunes or Google Play. The new GCN Live app. Don't leave home without it. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. Strategicshelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit strategicshelters.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. Explore Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel from 2013 on. This year, Activist of the Year Daryl W. Perry and Chris Cantwell will be keynoting. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or pay with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Keenvention.info. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you in studio, it's Ian here. Daryl. And Taryn and Jazzy. Don't forget to, Jazzy is the studio dog. Don't forget to join the, uh, check out the website. There's a lot of great features there. You get to actually control the content. And if you want, you can sign up for our email list. We send out a weekly update and every now and then you'll get news about like new radio stations we're adding and things like that. So you know that kind of stuff first. If you're on our email list, you'll find the sign up box on the left hand side of the page over at freetalklive.com. So was the New York Stock Exchange hacked? Let's jump into the story here from The Independent, because I saw the headlines today that the NYSE was down due to a technical malfunction, some sort of problem that they said was internal. It wasn't an external hack or something like that. Now, of course, if what they were saying was true, and who knows, but even if it what was even if it was true, it could still be someone inside the New York Stock Exchange yeah. who you know planted a, a hacking tool or something like I, that. I right? just think that, and I'm not saying that you know like there's some big global conspiracy to take down businesses. I just think that it's very coincidental that the same day that the New York Stock Exchange went down. United Airlines had a router problem that shut the entire airline down for a couple of hours. All flights were grounded at like 8 o'clock this morning because of some router problem in like their dispatch office. And also, didn't uh, the Wall Street Journal go down today? Yeah, that was also down for a while. Um, I'm not sure if that was the same reason, but I think the routers were kind of blamed around for a lot of these reasons. And so uh, I guess the people just couldn't find the plugs, you know? I mean, someone restarted Wall Street by just unplugging the router and putting it back in. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the solution yeah, to everything. I, I like your answer when I told you about this. You said, that's why I've got a backup router. Yeah, I literally have a backup router right underneath the main router. So <laughs> if I ever need to switch to another router, I just have to pull the plugs and, and put them into the other one. So um, anyway, let's get to the story here from The Independent. Anonymous may have been involved, they say, in the problems that have crippled the New York Stock Exchange, according to a tweet sent by the group. The tweet said Ah. this, quote, wonder if tomorrow is going to be bad for Wall Street. We can only hope. So this was sent yesterday by the anonymous Twitter account. Authorities so far have denied there's any sign of a hack, but your Anon News on Twitter sent the tweet around midnight local time before the problems were known and when the exchange was closed. While many accounts associate themselves with the group, a few have formed that send out detailed information about the attacks and seem to have inside information on the group's workings. 
Euronon News is one of those pages. Having been central in previous operations by the group, it described itself as a, quote, signal boost for anonymous operations, resistance movements, and journalism, unquote, and has nearly 1.5 million followers on Twitter. Wow. The account hasn't sent out any tweets since, just before the New York Stock Exchange problems began. Department of Homeland Security claims there were no signs of malicious activity at the time and blamed the outage on technical problems. Well, so, uh, you know, DDoS would be a technical problem, right? Like, yeah. ba- based on the technical definition of the word technical problem, a denial of service attack is a technical problem. Yes, but uh, obviously we don't know what kind of attack uh, was affecting the New York Stock Exchange. Presumably they would be uh, somewhat insulated. Whatever their servers are that are critical wouldn't necessarily be open to uh, one would think those sorts of attacks. But yeah, yeah, the way Daryl's talking about it, it sounds like it's seriously some guy with a router. Is that that's what it sounded like in the news? It was a router problem. Uh, well, we don't so know. apparently, how can Wall Street go down with a router? I, I, it certainly sounds like anonymous <laughs> could have been involved. It, it seems I mean, very unlikely that was a coincidental uh, yeah. tweet, right? It, right. Honestly, it seems odd to me that all the news I heard about it today, the first thing they said was it wasn't a hack, like like some sort of AP or less, you know, AP press release went out to make sure everybody knows it's not a hack that we're not vulnerable. Right, you know? but remember several years ago when. There was some big, huge blackout sort of thing to where, like, one uh, power station went down and then a large chunk of the country wound up losing power. It just goes to show that, you know, when you centralize this sort of technology, Mm. minor problems can be huge. So it may have been, like... Oh, the janitor accidentally unplugged something that he wasn't <laughs> yeah. supposed to plug. Fair you know, like, could be. He, he's scrubbing the floor and a breaker blew and now everything is down on Wall Street. Let's yeah. uh, go to Pastor Brett. He's in, I believe, Louisiana. Pastor Brett, you're on Free Talk Live. Los Angeles, oh, California. Sorry, I got the wrong L.A. there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to I like to plug my website and my podcast first and then I'd like to make a comment about a. Uh, what all the things in society. I think we'd rather have your comment first, and if it's really good, we'll let you plug your uh, your website. How about that? Well, you know, uh, I'll also tell you something else. Uh, you know, all, Can you all back off your phone stuff. by like an inch? I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of breaking up on me a little bit. Uh, okay. Wait huh. for a minute. Okay. I think that, that might be better. I think that might be better. Okay. Look, so anyway, uh, my podcast. And you just got closer is... again. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> My podcast is blogtalkradio.com forward slash. Oh, God, it's already not worth listening to. I mean, look, I said, please give us your comments first. This isn't Free Plug's uh, website. You know, it's not a Free Plug show. Uh, So please just comment first, and then we'll let you plug maybe. Okay. Well, I want to tell you about uh, liberty and uh, look at all the things that are going on in society. You know, you can break this down to a biblical model because of our sin. The wages of sin is death. What about is this Pete? Neighbor- is this Pete in California? You are darn right. Yeah. Okay. I figured that was you. All right. Go ahead with your uh, your spiel. Well, my shtick is this basically, or my spiel. I'm, I've been eating kosher lately, so it's I think it's my shtick. So basically, <laughs> here's how it goes. Okay. But well, you think that that's funny? You no. Know? Okay. Here, here's how it goes. You know, you love your neighbors yourself. Even you ultra-liberal uh, libertarians, we agree on most things, okay? As a conservative, we you're fiscally conservative and you're liberal on some things. I try to be, you know, based on a biblical curriculum, I, I'm conservative. So you and I conservatively, even though we disagree on certain things, we agree on the conservative part, 95% of it. But look, all this stuff, I mean, you're right. You know, the, the power grid is kind of like the government because you shouldn't centralize it too much, you know? Because look what happens when one little piece goes down, it gets hit hard enough. Look at all the other stuff. So <clears throat> anonymous, they're okay. I mean, they have some of their own flaws, but at least they're they're putting their money where their mouth is and actually do you know, they're they're anarchists, you know. I know totally where you're coming from, Pastor Brett, and uh, thank you for the call tonight. Uh, except for you know the things that we do disagree on, which we didn't get into there, and there's no real reason for it. So our toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. I, I'm still confused over the anonymous is anarchist. Like, we don't know because <laughs> they're, they're anonymous. anonymous. <laughs> like, it, it's a large group yeah. of people that uh, 
you know, they, they have like one common goal of like expose government and take down websites. But other than that, we don't know what any individual member of Anonymous thinks. There might be some people that are anarchists that are members of Anonymous. There might be there Marxists yep, that are I members of Anonymous. Are. And there might be everything in between that are members of Anonymous. So yes. th- to say that you know the entire organization is anarchist because they did <laughs> this, or one person says, I'm a member of Anonymous and I'm an anarchist. Like you yeah. can't then say everybody that is a member of this is an like the only thing that you can tie anonymous to and say that everybody is fill in the blank is Alcoholics Anonymous. Everybody that's there is an alcoholic because that's the first thing you have to say when you show up is, hi, my name is Daryl and, and I'm, I'm an, an alcoholic. alcoholic. And see? then everybody says, hi, Daryl, we know how you feel. You like, sound pretty rehearsed in that. Have you like very done comfortable that saying that? You, uh, no, <laughs> no, I'm not an alcoholic. Are you just, are you just going uh, based on the movies? <laughs> yeah, based on like okay. what I've okay. seen and heard. And oh, you whatnot. just sound a little too comfortable there. Okay. <laughs> hey, we'll come back with uh, with more here. You can share your thoughts. Uh, was the New York Stock Exchange hacked? I would say, you know, based on that tweet by that anonymous account, it certainly sounds like it could have been, but it's all speculation at this point. Feel free to speculate at 855-450 free or bring up anything here on Free Talk Live. More coming up. What if I told you that you could have the power to heal yourself and your loved ones with the gift of music? Unlock the healing secrets of the Bible with Whole Tones, a unique CD therapy program featuring seven secret ancient healing frequencies uncovered in the music of King David. Now you can get free samples of this music to discover their power to create energy, relieve stress, break negative cycles, and restore damaged DNA. For thousands of years, music has been used to heal. Ancient Greek doctors used flutes, lyres, and scythers to aid in digestion, treat depression, and induce sleep. Native Americans have used music to treat disease. Today, music is used to soothe post-operative pain, lower blood pressure, and boost immunity. Now you can benefit from healing music therapy in the comfort of your own home or office. Visit Holtones44.com and get a free sample of the seven secret healing frequencies discovered by King David. Visit W-H-O-L-E Tones44.com today for your free sample. That's Holtones44.com. Holtones44.com. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Did you know some countries are now banning GMO foods? It's true. That's why for quality storable foods, you need ready-made resources. For over 19 years, we've become the name you can trust for thousands of products, like Numana Healthy Food Storage. All Numana storable foods are non-GMO, non-soy, and gluten-free available. Call 800-627-3809 or click readymaderesources.com. Ready-made resources. We don't just sell the products. We live it. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a -a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. We're back here with more Free Talk Live. And, of course, you can join us at 855-450-FREE. Was anonymous behind the New York Stock Exchange hack. We've also talked about uh, the arrests kidnappings going on in Liberland, as well as secession. So you can talk about any of those things or whatever happens to be on your mind. You can also help Free Talk Live out by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier for $5 a month. And you can do that through any major credit card, through PayPal, or use Visa or MasterCard right on our website at amp.freetalklive.com. You get perks. You've got access to the uh, Amp Only Ar- the Amp Only podcast, the Amp Only Facebook group, and more. And the five bucks a month helps us a lot because it allows us to effectively market the show to new radio stations, bringing new listeners on board with the show. And that helps spread the ideas of freedom. So for five bucks a month, it might be worth it. Go to amp.freetalklive.com. A-M-P, amp.freetalklive.com. Taryn, you wanted to tell us tonight about a different story regarding U.S. persons on welfare. Yeah. There's a lot of them. There is a lot, and, uh, you know, I've kind of always suspected this, but I saw something from Freedom's Phoenix. Uh, <clears throat> basically, the article goes like this. One in five Americans participate in government assistance programs each month. One in five participate. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> according that doesn't to the, include the people who are getting paid by the government. No, and we're going to get to that, yeah. but this is according to the most recent data released to the U.S. Census Bureau. So, uh, before you continue, do they... Explain what they mean by government assistance yeah, programs. they break it down. Okay. Okay, so approximately 52 million or 21% of people in the U.S. participated in major means-tested government assistance programs each month in 2012, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. So means-tested wouldn't include Social Security? Here we go. No. Means-tested right. uh, includes... Supplemental Nutrition Assistance, which is SNAP, otherwise that's, that's food, food stamps, stamps. Um, Medicaid, which is uh, health care for the poor, Supplemental Security Income, which is SSI, Temporary Assistance for the Needy Families, uh, TANF, and uh, <laughs> General Assistance. So those are like welfare. Right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the number of beneficiaries of the uh, means-tested programs has increased significantly over the last decade. According to the U.S. Census, in 2004, there was nearly 42 million monthly recipients. Uh, Between that year and 2012, monthly participation has increased by 25%. Wow. Okay, so just one quick question, because they're giving population figures and percentages. So what has been the percentage change from when it was 42 million until it was 50 whatever million? Yeah, it's 50 they they said 2012 was 52 million and in uh, 2004 it was 42 million. So in just 10 years it went up 10 million people. Right, but my question is what's the percentage change? It's like 25%. It says 25%, no. but I didn't calculate I mean, I guess if you're right now, it's 21 percent of Americans. Yeah, I'm asking what was the percentage oh, of back Americans? in 2004? Okay. Because 21 minus 25 is negative 4 percent, and 42 million Americans <laughs> is never going to be negative 4 yeah. percent. They never give the figures of uh, how many people. I guess on 2004, percentage-wise, what you're talking about, but um, 
just and the, the, the reason I the yeah, reason if you I ask, pick this if you go go ahead. No, the, the reason I ask <laughs> is because a lot of times you'll see where they'll throw up these things of people in the lower uh, quintile, which is the bottom twenty percent, the bottom fifth. They're like the people in the bottom fifth, blah blah blah. Like here's all these statistics. We need to raise that up. Well, you're always going to have somebody in the lower fifth of mm. whatever. It's like when you do these tests, and like the whole no child left behind. We need everybody at 100th percentile. The only way to get that. everybody to 100th percentile <laughs> is to lower what 100th percentile means. So the question that I'm trying to find out, and they don't have the answer, is has this number stayed around the 20% range because that's the lower fifth of society and we need to help the people in the lower fifth of society? I don't know. If we knew that what the population of 2004 was, there's 52 million, and then we take the population of 2012 of 52 million, then we figure out all the percentages. Wait, it was lower in 2004. Wasn't it 40-something? 40 yeah, 42 million. million. So okay. it's increased 10 million in yeah. almost a decade. Well, still, a million a year is kind of what you're looking at almost. Right. And that's, that's um, significant because I don't think our population increases that much a year does it i don't think it has that's no. why i'm you know trying to figure out what the overall you know because if it's jumped from 15 percent to 21 percent, that's significant wow. if it's jumped from 19 percent to 21 percent, that's not as big of a jump the whole point of me bringing this up is i don't it's i'm still not a too worried number. it's a shocking number that one fifth are on the welfare programs you know, I mean, right. And right. then you You're add in Social about, Security on top of that. We're not talking you about Social in, Security. Right. We're not talking about workers' comp. We're not talking about uh, all the government back scratch compensation the, the, deals. Uh, here's the your free telephone. Yeah, the free telephones. Oh, and man, what, don't start what's me. What's funny on the free telephone is people love calling that the Obama phone, <laughs> but it was actually George W. Bush who signed the law Did he? creating that program. That's funny. I didn't know that. Yes. It figures. Well, it kind of, you know, this is but a. W a, phone just yeah. doesn't sound w right. Phone. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to get a W phone. That's awesome. Um, I would say, you know, this is kind of a reality check in a sense that. Uh, First thing, you're never really poor in this country. You can go completely right. oh, yeah. dirt broke, and you can still well, have a government apartment, a government TV, a government phone, and government well cable, fed. and if you be well fed. It. And I, that's crazy to me. That I don't know why people are so scared of losing everything because you really never do in this country. I mean, the there's a that, lot of wealth here. The, there's the no people doubt. that want to sleep on the street and stuff do it. Out of choice. Out of choice. They don't have to do this. Right, because a lot of people don't want to go. You know, get their name on government list and all of these other things. And I or can't they, blame them. For a that. lot of the people also have a, a lot of mental disabilities running around that just can't do this stuff, right. or it doesn't come you know, right. calculate in their head. And uh, here's what blows me away: is I went to a um, uh, <clears throat> a neurotransmitter seminar, so we went and learned about brain injuries, and we're talking about the injuries that, uh, well, and mainly degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. Parkinson's, concussions, that sort of stuff. And then what happened is they projected out the figures of how much it costs just to take care of an Alzheimer's patient. Because Alzheimer, you're talking about somebody that needs like someone to sit with them 24 hours a day, make their meals. I mean, severe, you know, when they, yeah, they start right. getting. And they're at four different doctors a, a week. And it's just a massive amount of expense just to, because these people don't really die. They live like this for 15, 20 right. years. Now, what happened is they, they projected it out to 2030, and it was equivalent to basically like the national budget, just taking care of one disease, Alzheimer's, not even bringing what? in Park, Parkinson's. This system well, is, but, I mean, that you also, cannot handle this. Well, it's it's I mean, not going to happen. But doesn't that also presume there won't be some sort of uh, miraculous development in treating what, Alzheimer's tell me or, what, uh, or curing it or something like money. that? There's too much money. I mean, nothing has been cured in our lifetime, has it? Well, I don't know. No. I don't keep track of that. Of course those not. Sorts of no, things nothing, have been they, they get, treated. They get yeah. managed. Yeah. You can be on a pill for the rest of your life, but nothing. I can't remember of anything being cured that I can think of off the top of my head. Even the stuff they say they've cured is kind of questionable if they right. really like did there's it. The one guy it's like in, sanitation. They clean something up. You the, know? There's the one guy in Texas who claims that he has the cure for cancer, but the FDA won't let him actually do the 
test well, required to actually I, prove if it works or I not. I believe that. I really do believe that there's no way they're going to let you cure cancer. There's there's just so much money right. if, in if cancer. If there was a cure for cancer, the American Cancer Society would cease to exist, and the American Cancer Society is never going to allow their organization and, to cease to exist uh, because they make too much money. And, I, I mean, I'm in the field, and I have had people come up to me who have cured cancer but it is a small handful, and it's always like somebody knows somebody knows somebody. So I know that stuff works out there, but I can't say for sure what. Mm. I mean, there's I have talked to people who have survived by just simply fasting or changing their diet or taking certain supplements that increase their immune system that did not go the common you know chemo route. But you're not a, as a doctor, you're not allowed to talk about that stuff. Right? Like you get your license taken away if the I medical ever monopoly that. will punish oh, you. Oh no, yeah, you can't even act like there's. There's uh, the, you know, the way the FDA medicine, the FDA is so screwed up. You cannot say that water cures dehydration without the risk of going to jail because you're making a <laughs> medical claim about something that has not been approved by the FDA. He's right. I remember. Yeah, and don't they raid like uh, natural food stores and things all like the that time? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, Eat uh, an orange. It cures scurvy. You could go to jail for saying that. It's really gotten out of control. Nice every, you, every few uh, years they try to pass a bill where they try to uh, regulate uh, supplements or giving advice online. That's a big one is, you know, someone's like a personal trainer. Yeah, I remember when they went that. after that blogger. I think it was in North Carolina uh, or something. Steve Cooksey, I believe, is uh, the blogger, the uh, diabetes warrior. And yeah. didn't he prevail in that? Yes. All right. There's more coming up here in moments because, you know, free speech and all. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. More on the way. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. We've got uh, news about Bitcoin and the Church of Cannabis as well. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Why are you playing a slot machine sound for an online poker site? Do you have a poker sound effect? Because we have a new advertiser, swcpoker.eu. Brought to you by the same guys that did seals with clubs. Now they're called swcpoker.eu. It's Bitcoin Poker 2.0. They have lots of new games, including Chinese poker. The Krill leaderboard is active now. It's Bitcoin Poker from the brand you trust, swcpoker.eu. Get on over to swcpoker.eu and start playing now. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, July 8th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.05 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,157 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $272. 
Antiwar.com reports U.S. drones launched a pair of attacks against a village in the Nangarhar province, housing what they believe are militants loyal to the Islamic State, killing a total of 49 people. Government spokesmen insist everyone killed was a militant. Afghan officials also reported in the wake of the strikes that they believe one of the slain was Gul Zaman, who they believe is the second highest ranking official in Afghanistan's the Islamic State. Zaman was one of six Pakistani Taliban who joined the Islamic State back in October. It is unclear so far how big the Islamic State is in Afghanistan, as the group is mostly cobbled together out of Taliban defectors. So far, they have fought against the Taliban primarily, though in the long run, they will likely attack the Afghan government and NATO as well. The Islamic State influence is growing on both sides of the country, with clashes with the Taliban reported against Nangarhar and in the far southwest. It is unclear how much, if any, support they are getting from the parent, the Islamic Islamic State organization, as the Raqqa based leadership typically waits for affiliates to reach a certain size before it starts to back them. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a statue of the Ten Commandments will remain on the Oklahoma State Capitol grounds while Governor Mary Fallon considers rewriting the state's constitution to make the presence of the monument legally permissible. Fallon issued a statement Tuesday saying that in addition to filing an appeal of the Oklahoma Supreme Court's order to remove the statue, she wants to make sure it's clear the monument is legal according to the Oklahoma Constitution. She said the Ten Commandments monument was built to recognize and honor the historical significance of the commandments in our state's and nation's system of laws. She added, it is virtually identical to a monument on the grounds of the Texas State Capitol, which the U.S. Supreme Court ruled was permissible. Last week, the state's highest court ruled the statue must be removed in accordance with the state constitution, which bans the use of public property for the benefit of any religious purpose. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. Reuters reports South Carolina Senate passed legislation Tuesday to remove the Confederate battle flag from the state's capital grounds, where it has flown for five decades. A bill to banish the flag from the state house grounds to a museum easily passed a third and final 36 to 3 vote in the Senate. The bill is now headed to the state House of Representatives, which voted to bring it to the floor for debate on Wednesday. The legislation was deemed an impossibility only months ago, but it gained strong bipartisan support since nine church goers were gunned down on June 17th during Bible study at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, about two hours southeast of the state capitol. Photos of Dylan Roof, the man charged in the shooting, showed him posing with a Confederate flag on a website bearing a racist manifesto. A grand jury indicted Roof on nine counts of murder and three counts of attempted murder, according to a prosecutor. The flag's defenders argue that it's part of South Carolina's heritage, representing those who fought and died for the rebellious Southern states that formed the Confederate States of America in the 1861 to 1865 Civil War. Republican Senator Lee Bright argued on Tuesday that the flag has been unfairly tied to slavery. He asserted not one Confederate flag flew over a slave ship. He noted that many leaders of the 18th century fight for American independence from Britain were slave owners themselves. While most politicians recognize that the banner is part of the state's heritage, many agree it should no longer be flown in a public place. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
In local news, 23-year-old graffiti artist Adam Zane has captured the heart of 19-year-old college sophomore Jessica Tissolo. Zane, who goes by the graffiti handle Slice, met Tissolo last summer at an annoyingly self-aware dive bar where the talentless artist caught Tissolo's eye with his cliched sleeve tattoos of trite Japanese imagery and the fact that he was wearing a winter hat indoors in the middle of June. His art is really just the absolute worst. I think we're going to get married someday. And now for This Week in Tech, brought to you by LG. An excited groom sends text messages to his buddies during his bride's vows. And a collection of VHS tapes are held onto for one more year. In other news, a burglar makes sure to crack the glass on a family portrait before leaving. There's nothing in the employee handbook about groping dead co-workers, an employee says. And a report finds that nobody's heard from David Blaine in a while, so somebody should probably check to see if he died in one of those things. Mere seconds have passed, yet we feel as though we've known you a thousand lifetimes. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free to join us here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. Daryl. And Taryn P. Lupo. And, of course, you can talk about whatever is on your mind. You can join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. We've talked about Liberland, the latest on the arrests there. One of the arrestees, uh, Krom, called in. At the beginning of the show, also secession in general, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, and you know, all kinds of interesting discussions here tonight, even uh, to the issue of the New York Stock Exchange and was anonymous behind the down, uh, the out, uh, the outage they had today. Maybe one of the people that bought a V for Vendetta mask on Amazon for like $5 and has one of those voice manipulators can call in and tell us if anonymous <laughs> was behind it. Yeah, well, right. So anybody can claim to be anonymous, but uh, there was a post to one of the more sort of nas- or internationally known anonymous accounts on Twitter last night prior to the outage. Uh, they did post something about, you know, hoping Wall Street has an interesting day. Uh, I don't have the actual quote in front of me at the moment, but uh, yeah. So, you know, what was the real story? I don't know. You're welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. And then welfare. One out of five people, according to Taryn, with some numbers uh, from I don't know where. but Freedom's Phoenix. Yeah, make sure you get right on the center of that. <clears throat> Freedom's Phoenix uh, has it up. From yesterday, and I believe it's uh, a blog from Free Bacon. Oh, well. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> By Allie bacon. Meyer. All right. So, yeah, saying that a lot of uh, Americans are on means-tested welfare, as they call it. Right. And uh, a lot of—and this is kind of why I was bringing up the point about percentages, is a lot of the stuff now, if you're in that lower 20%, then you qualify mm-hmm. for stuff. So right. when they say, like, you know, 20% of Americans are on these welfare programs, that's because they design it to where everybody that's in the lower 20% Gets can wind program. up qualifying for this stuff. Yeah, no, I see where you're coming from. But I think what Taryn pointed out last hour is definitely right, that this is still a shocking number to have one in five on just that form of welfare. That doesn't include corporate welfare. That doesn't include, right. yeah. you know, uh, all these other, uh, you know, the Social Security, the the Medicares and things like that. I well, just, Medicare is on uh, there. Because Medicare no, was on there? Medi- no, Medicaid, Medicaid, not Medicare. Di- big difference. So wait, and but Medicaid is for the elderly? Or? Medicaid is poor people. Medicare Medicaid is, is old people. Okay, got old it. people. Um, it, just the and fact some old people that are these, on both. Yeah. these five, I mean, this is just the, what's considered like the welfare programs has this many people, one in five, that's huge. And then like Ian's saying, if we count how much money is coming, uh, being taken from people producing money to basically people just getting money from the government. Cause I think the estimates and, and maybe you guys know this better, but it's something like, Seventy percent of this country gets some sort of money from the government, via it be pensions, Medicare, retirement. I've heard it's over fifty percent. I don't but know what the. I've heard over fifty percent. But of if you the count the workforce, if you count the per- contractors that get government, you know, money from contracts right. that work for Lockheed or whatever, or right, teachers. That, that's what I was going to say. Is it's over fifty percent of the workforce that is dependent upon government funding. Whether that's either working directly for the government or, or working for one of these contractors right. that is dependent upon government contracts. Yeah, I'd also heard the 50% So number. how yeah. does 52. a government survive 
where over look, can we all agree that over 50% of the people are taking money from 50% of the people that are earning money? I mean, you're getting paid from tax money. Right. And then another one out of five Americans has is on welfare, some sort of welfare program. And I bet there's even more money we're, we're forgetting about that's going to somebody. Right, because there's the corporate welfare. The corporate, oh my where, gosh, Where, like, yeah. Ted Turner, who lives in, like, Manhattan now, gets millions upon millions of dollars of farm, farm subsidies yeah. because he owns a lot of land in Montana. That's right. I mean, how does a government survive when this much money is falling well, out? That's of it? why the federal government is eighteen trillion dollars in debt, has nearly a hundred trillion dollars of unfunded mandates. <laughs> and I, I remember this was probably twenty years ago now when the federal debt hit this astronomical number four trillion dollars of debt. What is it now? Seventeen or something like it's that? It's almost eighteen. Yeah. Oh man. And when it when it hit four wow. The solution that I came up with, like, you know, 16, 17-year-old Daryl came up with the solution. The only way to solve the debt is dissolve the U.S. federal government. Mm, yeah. Because if there's no federal government, there can be no federal debt. That's right. You well, and I don't own the debt. They like to talk about yeah, how like people it's our owe. debt or you inherited. Well, the I politicians didn't... say that yeah, stuff. Like I love they, how we're... they talk about how a family has a certain amount of debt that is on right. it, and it's ridiculous. I would love I didn't to agree just to the spend debt. money and tell you, hey— <laughs> Ian, yeah, this is now your you. debt. <laughs> that juicer I bought on Amazon, yeah, you're paying for it. You know, any yeah, of that. No. It's uh, that's the idea, though. I mean, it's uh, I just refuse. I I, I think the lexicon is very important. That and it's still a fight. That you got to stop saying it's our debt and it's our problem, or because it's not mine. It's nope. some politician I made this and, to do and with them. saddled it to us at birth. I'm not related so I'm, to them, and even if I were, I still wouldn't be. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, beholden uh, uh, to their choices. It, it makes no sense. They're like, uh, it's like you're, I don't know how to, what, what would it be would a be good like analogy? It would be like saying that you are somehow responsible for the mafia's debt, right? Yeah. Like, you know, that's <laughs> okay, your next door enough. neighbor can't pay off their mortgage. You are now required to pay their mortgage for them. And it's, yeah, except it's even bigger than that, right? Like, we're talking about a huge organization with, right? But uh, no, if you break down what they yeah. say is your share of the debt, mm. it's basically equivalent to what, is your it? neighbor's mortgage might be. See, I haven't seen the breakdown in a while, so uh, we could probably do the uh, math Assuming that your neighbor lives in, you know, like a fairly inexpensive house, but still, you know, because I think the number is like, you know, the average American household, they claim owes like $40,000 or something. And it's probably a lot bigger now because that 40000 number I saw like seven years ago. Yeah. And I don't remember if that was per person or per household, but they always love breaking it down to the per household. Well, I'm not trying to sit here and spread fear and scare people or whatever, but it, it just blows my mind that this country lives in denial of basic mathematics. It's, you know, a third grader can do this math and say it is unsustainable. There's just no way this is ever going to be paid back. Right. And I, I saw one of these things uh, when the whole fiscal cliff thing was coming up. Where somebody broke down the numbers and they removed a bunch of zeros. And they said, imagine this is your household and you're $170,000 in debt. You make you know, $50,000 a year and this, that, the other thing. And you go to your accountant and say, okay, well, I've cut $38 of spending. Help me solve my debt problem. And I'm going to call it a, a surplus. <laughs> you know, I want to put a word on it. It's, I know we're $100,000 in debt, but we got this extra $25 right. surplus. <laughs> so we're doing a really good job with government. Oh, yeah. Remember all of the surpluses back yeah. when Clinton was president? But they the were national all arguing debt how it should be up. spent. Yeah. And it's like. Because they, they were doing. It was based on the budget. They, they were doing tricky math. Yeah. So they would say, all right, Ian, you're the head of the FBI. So we're going to say that you get to spend $100 million. Right. We only have eighty million to give you, but you get to spend a hundred, and then at the end of the year you come back and say, "I only spent ninety. All right, great, ten, 10 million dollar surplus." surplus. <laughs> because you yeah, spent it's... less than we said you could, even though it was more than we had. Is exactly the surpluses are only numbers on a like a current budget. They don't factor into the debt. Right. right. 
So uh, you want to talk about that? You're welcome to join us here. Also in the news, Bitcoin surging to record highs. What? It hit 1300 again? No, not that kind of high. Sorry. <laughs> a different Satoshi kind Nakamoto of high. smoked a joint? <laughs> The or also not case, that kind of high. From Cointelegraph.com, the number of Bitcoin transactions surged to a new record high on Tuesday. That would be yesterday, dwarfing previous peak activity, including that seen during the MT Gox implosion in December of 2013. A high of 442 transactions per second was recorded for July 7th, approximately two times the average rate of the PayPal network. Wow. Take that in for one moment. Wow. 442 transactions per second is about two times the amount of transactions per second that PayPal is doing. Wow. I didn't realize Bitcoin had hit that kind of a, a level. That's no, incredible. I didn't realize that either. Uh, we'll come back with more. It is being fueled this recent peak by the Greece situation as well, where the banks are still closed this week. It's Free Talk Live. This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP. And right now, you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever. Transcend is so small and so light, you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call minicpap.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1 800 939 8536. Extend your life with Extend Overnight. Hey, neighbor, what are you doing digging? You had a heart attack last year. Oh, I know. I was told no more hard labor. Then why are you digging? Well, I've been taking Extendivite. It's been approved to help my heart. Extendivite? Is that a new drug? No, not a drug. It's uh, more like an herbal combination made from garlic and cayenne. Herbal? How can that help? Well, actually, we've taken herbs for thousands of years, and Extendivite is doing the job for me. Does your doctor know about Extendivite? Yeah, my doctor knows, and he said it seems to be working for you, so don't stop taking it. I feel great taking Extendivite. I don't want to stop. To order, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit our website at heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extend Overnight. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, a Rebel's Journey. The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait, there's more! If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. 
Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. We are back with more Free Talk Live. And, of course, you can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Bitcoin isn't the only alternative currency in the world. There are a lot of alternative coins uh, in the electronic sphere. But there's also still silver and gold. And those things are, you know, respected the world around by people. Well, not everybody. You were recently watching a video, Taryn, uh, Mark Dice, <laughs> this guy who makes these sort of man on the street videos. Oh, the man yeah. on the street videos he does are hilarious. They are. The they are. I'm exposing the Illuminati symbolism hidden in the halftime show. I don't of the watch Super any Bowl. of those. From Absolutely him. bat poop <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Yeah, we watched this video, and basically this guy was walking through the street, and he had a silver bar that was melted down that kind of looked like a candy bar, and then he had real candy bars, and he was offering them to people, and he's like, do you want this 10-ounce bar of silver, now, or do you want this candy tarnished. bar? I, I didn't see the video. Was it actually you like, can't pretty tell. tarnished looking? I mean, okay. it, it was just a, it was obviously it was a piece of silver, Yeah. but I think he was just trying to play it down. Like, you want this tarnished 10-ounce? Okay. And I, in the video, I mean, there was like seven people that took the candy instead of... Did anyone take the silver? He had the silver at the end of the thing, so I don't know. Hold on. Was he giving it away or he was giving offering it away? He was offering it. it for free. Yeah. He gave a choice between a candy bar and the silver, and everybody took the candy. Because I know, I know there was one time... They know how to handle it. Where, ...where he did this thing where he like dressed up in a trench coat, looked real shady, and he's walking around... Hey, I've got this one ounce gold coin. You want to buy it for fifty dollars? And just right. like if somebody approached me, I'd be like, um, "Dude, like, what's How going do you on know here?" It's like, gold. Yeah. yeah, why would you sell an ounce of yeah. gold that's worth twelve hundred or eleven hundred dollars for fifty dollars? Well, so- the the reason most people didn't want to buy it was because it was a Canadian ounce of gold. Oh, really? It was a Canadian maple leaf. <laughs> Uh, so he had this one ounce Canadian maple leaf that no, wait, stamped are you speculating? $50. Is that why people actually said they didn't want to buy it? There were several people who were like, nah, man, that's Canadian. I, I'm, I'm oh, not going to wow. buy that. I don't remember that. I've, I feel like I watched that one, but I, I don't no, recall I, that detail. Yeah, there, there were a couple people that refused because it was Canadian. <laughs> well, so anybody that knows what gold or silver is worth would want to take the deal, but also that would immediately make you think, why is this happening? Is this right. person actually offering me a silver or gold, is or is this stolen, a hunk of whatever? Like, is this some kind of sting? Like, you know, I'm buying stolen merchandise? Yeah, that hair. could be a concern, too, from uh, from somebody. Yeah, so, I, so who knows what's going through people's minds. But nonetheless, it is entertaining uh, video. But my point was going to be, ultimately, that gold and silver, despite the people on the—it's usually people on the beach in California who, you know, probably not the right crowd to ask questions. I mean, I guess if you're right. a he, video he like also, that. Then. Well, one of the funniest things I've ever seen him do was have people sign the I'm an idiot petition. And most people would just That's what it says it. on the top. They're That's not reading what it, it says yeah. at the top of the petition, like where there's the wording of, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. I support blah, blah, blah. And he's just telling them, like, you know, random thing, like, oh, yeah, I'm, I am got a petition here to <laughs> uh, get rid of nuclear weapons or whatever. Just, oh, like, coming man. up yeah. with random things. People just sign it. There was <laughs> one guy that looked at it for a second, looked at him. I'm not signing this. <laughs> Why? I'm not an idiot. He was like, you're the first guy all day that's actually stopped to read it. Do you guys remember um, there was something called The Man Show back in the early 2000s? Adam Carolla? Adam Carolla and and, uh, Jimmy uh, Kimmel. Oh, right. Adam Carolla's the guy with the unibrow. Yeah. And then Jimmy Kimmel actually has like a real career still and and does stuff. Yes. Hey, Adam Carolla's got a career. He's he's like a podcaster, right? He's like the biggest podcaster out there okay, or something Okay, sorry. Like he that. has a career, too. My bad. <laughs> he doesn't have a boss, I mean, from what I understand, so that's probably Point pretty nice. <laughs> Point so being, he's, he's actually, actually making money still on, it. like, real no, TV. do you yeah. remember um, that they, did a, they used to do skits like this, and they did one to end woman suffrage? 
Right. And they were getting everybody to sign, all these women to sign, ending women's suffrage. Suffrage does sound like a bad thing. Yes. Right? <laughs> Just like a plebiscite sounds like some sort of thing that's going to suck your blood, oh, not a great. You know, vote. But they had right. all these signatures, and then some lady figured it out and chased them, and she was so mad. <laughs> so you, that's a great show. We've got all these women show. that are suffering. We need to end their suffrage. If you want to get uh, if you want to get gold or silver, go to gold.freetalklive.com. Even though people on the beach in California might not know the value, there are plenty of people around the world who do know it, and they are willing to pay uh, for it. So it's good. To, it's a great store of value, in my opinion. That's why I have gold and silver. Uh, regardless of what the the short term prices do, tends to over time do a pretty good job. And now's a of great up time to buy silver because it's the cheap. price is down. It's at like a five year low, from what I hear. Yeah, today it is fifteen thirteen, and gold is eleven fifty eight, which is outrageously cheap. Everything's on sale. Fifteen fifty two at the beginning of the morning when I recorded the news. Fifteen thirteen is what Freedom's Phoenix says right now. Whew. Well, you never know what's going to happen, but uh, if you're in the in it for the long haul, gold and silver, I think, over time show themselves to be yes. very, very good at keeping up with inflation, at least. So go to gold.freetalklive.com. And we we're also talking about Bitcoin and how there are record highs, not in the price of Bitcoin, but in the transactions per second, according to Coin Cointelegraph. And they've got this, this chart here that shows over a period of, uh, let's see, it looks like it's... July 14th of last year. So a, a year-long chart of transactions per day and just going up consistently over time. But then within the last uh, couple months, going up a little bit more, and then just in the last couple few weeks, two or three weeks, shooting up uh, to a record high, which was even more so than what it was in uh, during the empty Gox fall. So this is a big deal. This Who, is a lot. What do you think the transactions are? Because my understanding is, you know, Everything? most of it was gambling in the beginning of Bitcoin. Yeah, I don't know. Do you I, think it's, I mean, to surpass still PayPal, be. that blows me away. Yeah, they're what doubling PayPal. On? They're almost doubling PayPal. Not so quite. So it's got to be some sort of, I mean, that can't all well, be just you figure business there's, transactions. You know, all of these companies now that are taking Bitcoin, there's, last I heard, like 100,000 mm -hmm. merchants yeah, I just used it accept to, Bitcoin. And then you've got uh, a lot of companies like Gift, where you can buy gift cards with Bitcoin. Which is pretty cool. And then purse. You know, there, there's Purse, where yeah, purse. you can wind up getting like a 20, 30, 40. What, what's the highest? Like 45 or 50%? Well, I mean, you, you're, you're probably going not going to get 50%. I've, I put something on 50 and it didn't sell within a few weeks. So, I mean, you, it depends on what the market will bear. But generally, the average in, a, in the U.S. is 20%. Right. And I've gotten stuff, you know, several times at 20%, 25%, 15, no problem. Yeah. You can do the instant buy where you get like five or eight percent. Right. So you know you've got all of these things that are basically incentivizing people to use Bitcoin. Thank goodness, that's what Bitcoin needed to have happen. And then you've also got micro payments. So right. there's a lot of uh, services so like watch now. Watchmybit.com. Watchmybit.com is one where you can go and send payments of you know just a couple of pennies and watch a video. And what's great about that is, you know, different than, say, YouTube to where, you know, you've got to have 100,000 people watch your stuff before you get anything. any kind of anything. With Watch My Bit, somebody watches your video, they pay nine cents to watch it, you get seven cents instantly. Yeah, you're getting uh, the bulk of the transaction, whereas on YouTube, you're getting a fraction, a very right. small fraction of it. Uh, so, and of course, you know, YouTube's got to pay for this huge staff, whereas Watch My Bit doesn't have that, right? They've got like two people, I think. Our toll free number here is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. A little bit more about what's going on in the Bitcoin universe. Of course, you can also bring up anything you want to discuss here on Free Talk Live at 855 450 free. Have you ever wondered if you could make electric, light, or heat in your home for free? How about a motor that charges batteries at the same time? What if this also restores useless batteries and saves you lots of money? Come to our Renaissance Charge Conference Workshop on August 15th and 16th in Fort Lauderdale. Visit r-charge.com. That's r-charge.com for details. Or call 208-304-2954. 208-304-2954. Hi. 
Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or... Go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. For the past several years now, area woman Caitlin Mooney has been convinced that each and every one of her friends should be a professional comedian. Our reporters spoke to Caitlin this morning about her, quote, hilarious group of friends. Karen is so funny. <laughs> Like, I can't even explain it. She's always just saying what's ever on her mind. She has this totally sassy attitude. <laughs> you just can't help but laugh. My roommate, Reishmi, she always has these hilarious stories that, I mean, they're just too much. I'm always telling her that she should just go up on stage and talk. I mean, everyone would love it. Mooney went on to say that her good friend Lauren is so funny she could, quote, definitely be on Saturday Night Live or The Office, a sentiment she echoed about a number of her other acquaintances, including her childhood friend Marsha, her college roommate Angela, her co-worker Julie, and even her sister Jennifer. This is the Onion News Network. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. A record day for Bitcoin yesterday. Nearly doubling, not quite. Getting close to doubling the uh, PayPal network, the amount of transactions per second. Very exciting news. Uh, so we'll continue here. Your calls come first. Let's go to Craig in Manchester. Craig, you're on Free Talk Live. Is this Manchester, New Hampshire? Oh, yes, it is. Well, hello, Craig. Um, I... Um Hi, I just want to clarify something that you're saying here. Um, the Bitcoin network's under attack right now, and it's been under attack for about 48 hours. Um, there's a company in Europe called CoinWallet.eu, and about two or three weeks ago, they, they did the same kind of attack. And, some, and they were calling it a stress test, where they're just bombarding the network with transactions, basically worthless transactions. 
Um, are these the people that are sending could, around like point zero 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 one? Sending like Bitcoin? the Satoshi amount. Yeah, and then like uh, <laughs> right, including right. some sort of a message advertising a service. Oh, I forgot about those. Is no, that what I, we're talking about here? I'm not seeing. A, I'm not seeing a message. But what they're doing is they're, they're they're spamming it with lots of little transactions, and the fee they're paying is just a fraction above what the regular fee would be, so that they get priority. And effectively, what it's doing is it's causing regular, normal transactions to be put into a memory pool and not being put on the blockchain. And so, effectively, it's really just jamming up the network. Um, so, I don't, Whoa. I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone knows that this attack right now that's been going on for the past 48 hours is the same company as did the previous two because they advertised the previous two and talked about it and everything and now it's happening again in the same way and a week after it did last time but there's ninety three thousand transactions which are backlogged um, um, you know and have not been put on the blockchain and that's really the problem that it's causing wow okay so this is affecting uh, ninety three thousand transactions that doesn't sound like a whole lot uh, but obviously, if it's your transaction, then it's important to you, right? Like, you don't want your transaction to be sitting out there. You want it to get taken care of. And I know I did see something recently about uh, the Bitcoin client requiring more confirmations. There was some sort of uh, bad mining going on. And I've always just sort of trusted that the geeks are going to figure this, you know, the problems out. There have been, Bitcoin has encountered some, some bumps in the road over time, and they have managed to overcome them. I'm looking here at the front page of Cointelegraph.com, and I'm not seeing any headlines about this. That doesn't mean it's not happening. I'm not saying I'm doubting you. Just saying, why isn't this getting bigger uh, press if, uh, if this is actually a serious problem? Well, it may not be a serious problem. A lot of people are encouraged by it because mm -hmm. it is ha able to handle the number of transactions. The only thing that really needs to happen to uh, actually solve a, pro the, a problem like this, should it come up in the future, is actually increase the block size so they can put more transactions into each block that comes out. And that's been the uh, long-running argument now for the past several months, is should we increase the block size, should we not increase the block size? So some people are thinking that the attack is probably just to try to yeah. encourage people to increase the block size. Daryl has a question for you about this, but before he gets to that, uh, the block size. Remember, we're doing a national general audience talk show, so let's, let's try to make this as understandable as possible for people who are new to the idea of Bitcoin, this decentralized currency. The blocks are these things that are mined by people who are doing what's called Bitcoin mining, which sort of helps to verify all the transactions on the network, and uh, and also it, it, it pays out these miners' fees to the people who are involved. Is that right? The blocks are what they're mining? Right. They're mining a block, and the network is set up to mine a block about every 10 minutes. And each block uh, currently can contain about 1,300 transactions. And you're saying and, increase uh, the, the size of how many transactions a block can, can, can contain? Right. I think uh, Gavin Andreessen is uh, looking up at about 20 times what it currently is. And so from really one, no me was it mo one megabyte or to 20? Right megabyte? now it's about one megabyte. They want to bump that up to 20. And Craig, I'm glad that you mentioned the block size because I was going to ask if you think that this might have something to do with that. And since you've already said that it does, that leads me to my next sort of follow-up that I've heard Ernest Hancock express some concern about on Declare Your Independence to where he said, all right, so if we increase this from one megabyte to 20 megabytes, that means that people running this software, they're going to be downloading 20 megabytes of info every 10 minutes. And that's going to get really big, really fast. So you're looking at like a terabyte hard drive per year just of Bitcoin information that is going to be downloaded. And his speculation, and I want to see if this is something that you're concerned about, is that instead of having thousands of miners, you're going to see that number drop to where there's maybe dozens of miners and then the centralization of this thing that's supposed to be a decentralized currency. 
Well, no one is um, no one is worried about the 20 megabyte block uh, per se. What they're worried about is ultimately they're, they're saying that there has to be some sort of limit. So we might as well solve the problem now to where we decide what we're going to do and when we're going to reach that limit. But if it goes to 20 megabytes uh, a block, sure, uh, we're going to be downloading an awful lot uh, of data for you know every day but the the current technology can can handle it so that's not really a technical limitation as it stands right now as i understand it also isn't it true that if the amount of mining or the amount of miners the amount of mining power goes down that it actually gets easier to mine so therefore there would be an incentive for people to once again join if enough people left that the difficulty if you will actually gets easier the less people right. mine Right, it's self-correcting, so there will always be, um, you know, a block created every 10 minutes, and so the fewer people mining, the more money an individual miner can make. So how about trying to solve the problem a slightly different way, and instead of having it set at an arbitrary 10 minutes is when a block happens, and we need to increase the size of a block to change it to where every time there's one megabyte of transactions – there's like the transaction block, and then there's the reward block. So have two different types of blocks. I imagine they're discussing things like that at the uh, the technical tables of Bitcoin, where uh, you do essentially have a worldwide movement of programmers who have come together, and they have a, a process of proposals like that being made. You know, because that's not a made. proposal I've seen. The only proposal I've seen is... Increase it to 20 or don't change anything and Bitcoin dies. Yeah, I'm sure you're just seeing the news reports on it, right? Like, I, I imagine the conversation among the programmers is a little more robust than what's sort of trickling down to the, the lower levels. What do you think, Craig? Well, just one more thing I want to add. I don't know much about that, but uh, a lot of people are encouraged by the number of transactions that are being dumped on the network right now because it shows that the network can handle them as long as we have a place to put them. But and what you're saying, uh, though, is really that uh, this transaction spike you believe is caused by this company as opposed to what's happening in Greece? Well, yeah, because um, it's it's happening pretty uh, – if, if you look at some of the charts, it's happening pretty methodically. It happened at noon, started at noon – on Monday, uh, ended. Oh, I can't. I don't really have the numbers in front of me right now. It's but It's just so hard to. Uh, I mean, you know, without evidence, it's hard to know really where it's coming from. But it's interesting speculation. But it, it certainly Craig. makes sense that a company that is pushing an agenda, mm -hmm. and the agenda is increase the block size to twenty, that they would do something to try to prove that this is why we need to increase the block size to twenty. It's kind of like, you know, if you look at the way various legislation winds up coming about where you've got some business or some special interest group that says, this is a problem. Here's the solution. Yeah. And they're pushing a solution while basically creating a problem. He's talking about a false flag business yeah. attack. False flag, false Shame flag on Bitcoin. you. No, it's not necessarily a false flag because a You're false flag a is something to fix that it. doesn't really exist. And you're saying that it existed. Yeah. So, like, uh, I, I'm convinced that the only reason that there are mandatory uh, car seat laws are because some car seat manufacturer they lobbied for it. Sure, thought to themselves, "How can we sell more of our product? I know we'll go say that people have to buy our product." Well. I, it would be interesting to see if somebody could somehow break down because you know, the sources of these purchases. I mean, we certainly know that a lot of people are going to the Bitcoin exchanges, especially in Europe, from Greece. That's certainly been happening, too. 855 450 free. Anyway, it's free talk live. More coming up. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Now a twice as nice twin kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals twin kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95. But now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the twin kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. We are back with more Free Talk Live. Time for you. If you want to join us in these remaining moments right now at 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. And in the Bitcoin universe, there has, you know, every now and then been some sort of boogeyman. There's some technological challenge or some potential thing that could happen in the future that has sort of hung over the movement, if you want to call it that, the, the, the community. And I feel like the programmers who are behind Bitcoin have exceeded expectations. They have solved problems. They've improved the software. By the way... The Bitcoin software, the official Bitcoin core, as they call it, you go to Bitcoin.org and you can actually download software too. Like you want it on a desktop computer, 
uh, where you know it, it can run all the time because it's essentially kind of like a node on the network and it has the full what they call the blockchain. This is the record, the public ledger of every all the transactions. Transaction. Every transaction that's ever happened on Bitcoin that that's stored on your computer if you're running the full client, this Bitcoin Core. That's still in beta. It's still like point one zero or something like that. How much it, room does that thing take up to install? I think it's currently at around uh, 40, 30 to, it might be on the close to the 40 side of 40 gigs. Wow. Wait, hold on. It's still in beta? Yeah, it's still in beta. Bitcoin's still beta. I mean, we're five years in or six years in at this point. Wow. I, I mean, because I don't really know much about this technology, but you're saying if I don't want to eat up 40 gigs of hard drive space, is there, like, can, can I just download just wallet. what's happened this yeah. this month? You don't, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, know? so what I'm talking about here is the official Bitcoin Core software. There are a bunch of different Bitcoin wallets out right. there. So okay. like blockchain.info, for instance, is a good web wallet where you don't have to install anything. That's uh, actually you, a cross-platform wallet. True. Uh, blockchain does have apps that you can download for your phone, but you can you can have a wallet without even installing an app, right? You can, right. You can just go to blockchain.info and you can have a wallet there, and they have the full blockchain on got their it. servers, and there are thousands of people. I've got it right here uh, in the LRN studio, so there are thousands around the world, probably hundreds of thousands of people who are running the full client to really you know make sure that the network is is solid, right? And that way, other people who don't want to run the full client can, they're, they're okay because there are enough people running the, the full thing. I was just bringing that up and even sort of talking about its existence because it's still in beta, right? Like we're still on the early end of whatever Bitcoin is going to become. Uh, even the Bitcoin programmers feel like this is only worth calling a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. You know, that's what we are on here with uh, with the Bitcoin software. And so we're not even at 1.0. Like I, I always hear people talk about you know bitcoin 2.0 uh -uh. we're not even at 1.0 no. let's get to one before we start talking about two so i feel like you know the programmers are going to solve whatever the issues are and if they don't there's all kinds of alternatives out there right so yes. if all of a sudden are you still mining litecoin no no i stopped that a while back why did you stop uh, i thought it was doing well I don't know. It was just too. It was too much of a hassle to make it work. Like it would, the miner thing would stop or whatever. Oh, right. And there's this po mining pool thing. It just too. It wasn't worth my my time or my effort. I I just remember at one time the studio cam that computer was also yeah. mining Litecoin. So it was like the Litecoin LRN studio cam or something for a yeah. While. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think I got more than a handful of Litecoin out of the deal. But um, anyway. So if you want to join us here, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We're talking about the Bitcoin network hitting a record. There's a certain conspiracy theory about this, that it has to do with one company somehow spamming transactions into the network that is trying to supposedly prove uh, that the Bitcoin network can handle this level of transactions. While also saying, and by the way, we need to increase this 20 times the amount of transactions that they can do. They actually talk a little bit about that here in... Uh, the it kind of reminds me of those companies that write virus software that purposely put out a virus that they just oh, happen to have man. the cure for. Uh, has it been oh, found? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I accidentally got one of those somehow to where basically what it is, it's uh, extortionware. Yeah, to where <laughs> that's what it's called. That's excellent. I, I don't know if that's what it's called, but that's what I call <laughs> it. Is, yeah. So great. It, it'll download this thing and then it like pretends to. You know, say we've detected a virus on your computer. If you buy such and so virus remover, then we'll remove that for you. And here's the link, and it's fifty dollars. But if you pay the fifty dollars, it still doesn't remove it. It just like creates another virus that right. is one of these virus remover viruses. And yeah, it's basically extortionware. Uh, so back, let's get back to the story here from Coin Telegraph about the record number of transactions. PayPal's network does 289 transactions per second apparently uh, these days, and now Bitcoin had a high of 442 transactions per second for. And that's averaged yesterday. over an entire day. Yeah. So I wonder what the largest number of transactions per any specific yeah, second was. 
A uh, sudden surge over the two days from July 5th saw the number of daily transactions more than quadruple to reach a maximum 202,000 before starting to fall. A previous less intense surge had begun on June 30th, something commonly attributed to news of Greece's potential insolvency and renewed capital controls. Now, personally, I would like to believe that story more. I don't know what the source of the increases is. Are but you know we have seen st- numbers coming from the uh, the European and Chinese exchanges showing customers from Greece are shooting up like you know dramatic increases in uh, in that so that's I think important to point out here where this is coming from overall it's again anybody's well, guess I I used it on five or three times this week it's probably me Fiverr yeah. takes Bitcoin oh Fiverr takes Bitcoin man I'm buying all the time Ooh. with Fiverr Fiverr is this website where you can you get, get like, anything. Yeah, you can get anything you want. I'm using um the way I found out how to get better YouTube hits is to translate it into different languages in the closed caption. And people will and do that so on Fiverr. So I'm doing a story right now about Muslims, uh, Muslims for Liberty. Mm-hmm. So I'm having something done in Arabic, oh, and those awesome. guys will do it for five bucks. That's incredible. You know? <laughs> Somebody will sit down and watch uh, whatever and your video and transcribe it. And if it's really long, it might be as much as twenty bucks. Okay. But, you know. Right. And the, five bucks, man. The thing with Fiverr, Bitcoin, is it's difficult. Or rather, it can be difficult to actually find someone willing to do your thing for actually $5. And yeah. the reason I say that is because $5 is the starting price. Uh, so you could put, I will respond to your email for $5. <laughs> I will do your voiceover for $20 extra. But I have heard but that I, a lot of people get stuff for 5 There are bucks. people that will do it for 5 They have a rating system. So you just look at the ratings and you can figure out who's riffraff and who's uh. not. And plus, I go back to the same 5 or 10 people that I've used before. Right. So, and so I mean, uh, once I found the regulars, I'd always go to them. I, I was looking for somebody to do some promos and liners and intros mm-hmm. for my podcast, Peace, Love, Liberty Radio. So I was looking on Fiverr because I've seen, you know, like some pretty, you know, uh, good voices on, yeah. or rather I've heard some good voices on Fiverr. So I was looking and some of these people were... Doing, you know, like I'll record 30 seconds for $5. I'll send you the file in wave format for $20. I'll respond in one day for $20. I'll do this. I'll mm-hmm. do that. Yeah, they t- so, like, you know, if you wanted it done fast and the way you wanted it, right. it was going to cost you 65, 70 bucks. I got Epic Movie Voice Guy to do my thing for $5. Wow. That's and awesome. And he even did a modification for me. What? For no extra charge, five bucks. I got it in twenty four hours. Yeah, Incredible. I don't. I don't understand. Some of the deals I get on there are just amazing. Like if you're trying to run a website and create something from scratch code, there's guys on there that do it for five bucks. It's 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 ridiculous. Right. So some of these people, you know, it might or be somebody. In... I can't do graphic work, so I just pay some. I yeah. had someone do a book cover of mine for five bucks, and Incredible. it looked good. It's incredible. It looked good. Yeah, it might be somebody from you know like Pakistan yeah. or somewhere to They're where five dollars is a lot yeah, of money. To that's them. awesome. I mean, yeah. right Fiverr is awesome. Sorry, yeah, go bringing, ahead. Bringing the world anyway, together, man. That's effort. probably me because I've been using it a lot on Bitcoin. One uh, person <laughs> said about the increase in Bitcoin, quote, it's brilliant that the net the, the network has held up so well with just one megabyte blocks. Makes me a lot less worried about the future, even if block size isn't increased right away, said one Reddit user following the publication of the data. Concern over the structural integrity of Bitcoin's network has been at the forefront of something, except I just clicked that, of debate with both developers and commentators considering how to provide for a potential widespread adoption and usage scenario. Coupled with uncertainty over core development funding, the network's demonstration of its ability to nonetheless process sudden significant increases in traffic is timely. And lead developer Gavin Andreessen has tabled a motion to increase the size of a Bitcoin transaction block from 1 meg to 8 megs via hard fork which would allow for more transactions per second, but which other parties have not universally accepted. So it looks like the debate goes on in the uh, the halls of the Bitcoin programmers. Gavin Andreessen, by the way, a Free Talk Live listener and the, one of the people who originally turned us on to Bitcoin. The, the guy who originally turned us on to Bitcoin here on Free Talk Live a long time ago. We'll see you tomorrow night online. In the meantime, check out Daryl. He's fpp.cc, Taryn at terranlupo.com. And more Free Talk Live tomorrow. See you then. 
Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN. Dot FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, July 8th, 2015. Silver is trading at 15. The latest episode of Cop Block Radio is next, after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, July 8th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.05 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,157 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $272. Antiwar.com reports U.S. drones launched a pair of attacks against a village in the Nangarhar province, housing what they believe are militants loyal to the Islamic State, killing a total of 49 people. Government spokesmen insist everyone killed was a militant. Afghan officials also reported in the wake of the strikes that they believe one of the slain was Gul Zaman, who they believe is the second highest ranking official in Afghanistan's the Islamic State. Zaman was one of six Pakistani Taliban who joined the Islamic State back in October. It is unclear so far how big the Islamic State is in Afghanistan, as the group is mostly cobbled together out of Taliban defectors. So far, they have fought against the Taliban primarily, though in the long run, they will likely attack the Afghan government and NATO as well. The Islamic State influence is growing on both sides of the country, with clashes with the Taliban reported against Nangarhar and in the far southwest. It is unclear how much, if any, support they are getting from the parent, the Islamic State organization, as the Raqqa-based leadership typically waits for affiliates to reach a certain size before it starts to back them. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
UPI reports a statue of the Ten Commandments will remain on the Oklahoma State Capitol grounds while Governor Mary Fallon considers rewriting the state's constitution to make the presence of the monument legally permissible. Fallon issued a statement Tuesday saying that in addition to filing an appeal of the Oklahoma Supreme Court's order to remove the statue, she wants to make sure it's clear the monument is legal according to the Oklahoma Constitution. She said the Ten Commandments monument was built to recognize and honor the historical significance of the commandments in our state's and nation's system of laws. She added, it is virtually identical to a monument on the grounds of the Texas